Hello and welcome. It's week number two here of the EU SCC. Bringing you guys smiley face and donkey hoof this time around. J Mac and Alpha Jackal to bring you the cast. AJ, how you doing this week? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Uh, today we got some good, got some good games going on. Yeah, we're going to be bringing in the SOC team this around. And um, last week, the biggest thing that we noticed is that Donkey Hoof was struggling like crazy. They really couldn't stand up to the poppies at all. How are they going to stand against Smiley Face this time around? I'm not so sure because, like you said, they did struggle in the last week. But Smiley Face, we know exactly what they can do against these SDC caliber teams. Um... It's just a matter of how much of Don Cube have improved. Yeah, I think that's the big number here is how much has Donkey Hoof really stepped up this time around? Because like I said, last week against the Poppies, it looked like it was two completely different leagues. But this time, them having to go against their former SOC contender along with them now stepped into SEC. It might be a little bit more even of a matchup, but they've really got to work on this early mid game that they tried to go. They had a strong early game, but how is their mid game going to stand up this time around? Uh, I'm just going to really look at that draft because last week it was Frankenstein-ish, to put it at the very least. Uh, it was good picks here, good picks there, but they didn't work well together. So it, it's really just uh, a case of has the draft improved enough for them to then compete up here with Smiley Face? Yeah, that really felt like the biggest flaw from them is just, this looks cool. Ooh, I kind of like that guy. And they were just kind of... Picking gods from the tree here, and eventually they get a, a handful of seven different fruits here, and they're like, well, none of this makes sense together. How am I supposed to make apple juice if I have a, a peach and a grape here? I mean, it, it just didn't make sense for them, and they kind of just had this strange concoction of drafts going on last week. But I imagine going up against people that they're familiar with here, with, with Smiley Face up against Donkey Hoof, they might have a little bit better of a chance, especially with how limited some of the god pool is on Smiley Face. Yeah, I um, I don't know. This, this might be the games that both of these teams will feel very confident going into and winning. So they'll probably pull stuff out of the bag that they're maybe not expecting. Perhaps these two teams would be the scrim partners against each other as well in the SCC and the SOC from before. So it, it could be a case of they already know exactly what's going to go on. They already know, you know, the back end drafts, the plan mm. Z all the way down to there. So it, it, it could be a case of let's play stuff that we even we don't expect and you can already kind of see how from last week till now you can see the shift in the picks and the bands i mean al kwong has seen himself make his way onto this little graphic here as well as arachne even chiron has stepped up into this little matchup here so we're seeing a huge shift in the meta just from uh, you know end of phase two week one of phase three and now here into week number two for it but the band's not really uncommon for what we're seeing at the top end. Yamoja, Cthulhu, and Persephone, all some of the top played and top band gods. Yeah, no surprise to see them all taken away. I imagine a um, Morrigan's going to be taken out as well. You can see her sitting at the top of the band shards right next to uh, Persephone and Cthulhu. Sobek's uh, top pick, but not really been a top ban. So this is just a bit more of a targeted uh, ban here against smiley face one more ban each there goes the morrigan as well there from smiley face nemesis though sneaking away into the top bands i i'm personally not a huge fan of the nemesis we do see her banned here again it maybe it's just the fact that we do transition more into this burst meta and she fits in quite well with it and she kind of feels like she fits a couple of different styles that you can go the tree the traditional you know uh, May style build that we've seen so much of, of the junglers, but she can also kind of fit into that golden blade that we've been seeing a lot of. Something we haven't seen a lot of as well, especially here in the SCC. No one really seems to want to get rid of her, so they just get to play her all the time. Freya picked up here first round for Smiley Face. Well, you can get rid of Freya, but you're then letting through uh, Cthulhu. You're letting through either a Persephone or a Morrigan. Maybe a Mocha in there. I think I think the Sobek's the one that I would have changed for a Freya ban. Mm -hmm. But again, it could be that Smiley Face are very proficient and very versed in this Sobek and the playstyle that comes with it. And Donkey Hoof just don't want to play against it. And if you're going to give up a Freya, getting an Alcog and all on in return is no biggie. Like, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'll take that every single day of the week. Yeah, a couple of magical carries in return for one of them and then a Merlin to boot onto that one. So uh, uh, how long has it been since we've seen four mages first picked in any situation? Uh, I, I can't even recall a time that it was straight up just 
four mages. Um, I think the closest I can come up with would be four warriors as a top pick, and that would have been a launch tournament right. back before the warrior nerfs. Uh, okay, we're not going to talk about that because I remember uh, this was a long time ago, probably like season three of Smite Challenger Circuit. I counted 10 warrior picks and bans in a single game, and that was when there was only like 12 warriors in the game. Oh, man, just, just imagine being one of those two warriors that wasn't picked or banned. One of them was Shock. One of them has to be of Shock. What, one of them was Shock. If I, rem I remember one of them was Shock, and I think that was when Nike was also kind of doo-doo, so nobody was like messing with Nike either. Maybe I'm not a hunt. No, Nike wasn't season three. That was way before then. Uh, so, yeah. I don't even know who the other one, but Chalk was for sure into that one. Uh, Horus and Jing Wei, the last two gods picked up here between Smiley Face and Donkey Hoof. We also had Arachne and Jormungandr. Strangely, made it all the way through until the last ban. Not too sure about that one, but if you're gonna get Merlin and Horus instead of the Jormungandr, I don't mind that. Merlin quite strong in the mid lane. Horus pairs up very well with the Freya, allows to cover for Freya's weakness in that early game. The Jing Wei pickup, just a bit more safety, probably one of the best matchups into the Freya from any hunter. So just a lot of reactionary picks, picking what synergizes well with their picks already, which is why we don't really see room for the Yormungand up until now as a ban, and then that just allows Tyr to go through uh, as a pick. Going up against the Achilles most likely, although we could flex into the jungle. I've seen a little bit of flexibility with Tyr as well between support and solo. Uh, most likely going to be going into that solo lane there. But Achilles, Cerberus locked in here. So I think this will be Achilles going into the jungle this time around. That Cerberus and Horus pretty much just got to alternate between that. So most likely into the support role for Horus. I'd imagine they're throwing Cerberus in that solo lane. So option goes back to Donkey Hoof for their last pick. And it's going to be uh, Bacchus. Not what I expected. Not what I expected either, but can apply a lot of pressure to this fray. I can also apply that anti heal, and that's what I think you know some of the biggest options here. It's about that back is gonna flop in, out comes the Ola on Sanctified Field, that then stuck flopping back down for ages. And then they're also gonna have 50% anti heal applied to them before they even, you know, apply Divine Ruin, Brawler's Beat Stick, uh, which have to come out for the tier, if anybody. And I don't know if tier's gonna be building Brawler's Beat Stick, so you're looking at Divine Ruin. Um, maybe a Shadow Steel Shuriken could come out here for the Ching Wei, who knows? Yeah, we haven't really seen that new Shuriken come out. Why is it that, you know, we, we've been saying anti heal is pretty much the staple to build, but we rarely ever see that Shuriken built up. It's because in the previous patch, it didn't really have the power to back it up. And I, I still felt it was a great item because, yes, you do sacrifice the power, but 40% anti-heal when your opponent's not going to have that at that stage of the game is enough to swing and win you the fights against another person with lifesteal. It's one of the only things that could actually helps you win a fight against somebody with Hecate. But now that it's been buffed, now that it's got 30 power to it, and the price has been decreased just a slight bit, it, it is certainly an item that everyone should be looking to go for, I feel, if they're going up against uh, somebody who goes Wing of Hikate, somebody who's got natural life seal in their uh, kit as well, such as this Alquan. We're going to be seeing Olorin go into the mid lane. We've been seeing him more traditionally in the duo lane more often than not. And uh, even Dardis has been taking this Jingwei into mid, so I'm kind of surprised that we're actually just seeing the Olorin thrown out in mid lane. I think just because the old, the, like I said, the Jigway's got a better matchup against uh, the Freya than the old run will do. The old, the old run just kind of gets farmed. The second he gets sanctified field, Freya just goes up into the sky and starts shooting balls from the heavens. Not much the old run can really do to escape that. But that over in the mid lane has a bit more of a good time against the uh, against the Merlin. Able to put pressure onto him. That sanctified field forces that flicker out very early in the fights. And silence. Takes a big chunk of damage, but a quick blink in into a stun on a Raiden. No beads pop from that one, so they're gonna hold on to it. Very patient with that relic. Yeah, it's a good play so far from Donkey Hoof's dual lane. Beads from Ecro comes out early to allow him to just clear that wave a bit more quickly, but it eats a lot of damage for him. That can just put the pressure back in favor here of Donkey Hoof. Well, it's gonna be the level two out of the two supports, but Silence is not having a good time with it. And Raiden dashes in aggressively with the final basic first blood on the board for Donkey Hoof. Uh, they came into the first week against the Pappies. <laughs> did not look comfortable, but so far, so good for them. Quite comfortable. 500 gold up thanks to that first blood bounty. And they got to find themselves uh, in a nice position in the dual lane. Mid lane and solo lane just still... Still waiting to really see who gains the initial advantage here. Well, typical solo lane, a little bit of boxing early on. Trade some damage out, but... 
No real kill potential just yet for the two. Serga going to make his way, try and go for those back camps, try and get a steal off them. He is just a little off the mark for the timer. He sees that come back up. Little Mimo with a little bit of contest, not going to be able to take those ones away. So comes up empty on that invade. I do like the idea, though, trying to invade and put pressure on the Alkong early. It is the Alkong's weakest stage of the game before he gets a couple of rings online, a bit of attack speed, a bit of movement speed. Uh, if you're able to invade and put pressure onto him and keep him down, you can stop him getting online and then just have a lot more of an opportunity to win the game before he then starts eating your teammates for free. So what's the first ring that you rush on the Alkong? Is it going to be the Ring of Hakate, just like you see with the typical Mage ACs, or do you see him rush into a different ring to start out? It depends on which boots he goes. If he goes in for the power boots, uh, the boots with lifesteal on them, he's going to go Hikate. If he goes in for these cooldown boots, I would like to see a Telkine's ring come on, even though it's quite expensive. But then he's just going to go straight into lifesteal. The Hikate ring is more, more often than not just going to get picked up. Then goes into a Magcross talent to get himself 10% penetration on top of that. Rushes a couple more rings afterwards. And at that point, it's just most likely going to be game over. Gunner here in the mid lane on the Ola run. I said earlier, traditionally kind of into the dual lane, but here in the mid lane to kind of put the pressure on the Merlin. And Necrom left here to free farm just a little bit before I silence. Walks back in. Yakin and Raiden going back to their side of the jungle. Clear up. Maybe try and drop that red. Freya struggles a little bit in the early clear, as you can kind of see here. For example, it, it's not one of the namesakes of this Freya, but once that Ring of Akate comes online, that's what we've been seeing the big swing for. Yeah, that is one of the big reasons why you do see Mage ADCs left, right, and center. That's why you're also seeing Alquan coming over here to just put Ekron under even more pressure. Preds level 5 does have access to that uh, King of the Eastern Seas ultimate. They have spotted out there by Serga Zak, who's on his rotation as well over towards his duo lane. A lot of action over here on this left-hand side, and that's something I do like to see. Because you want to try and get early pressure in this left-hand side, uh, onto the Gold Fury side more specifically. Just because then you have the opportunities to take the Gold Fury early on. You saw how quickly e -Chrome di dipped out of there, dropped out, whichever way you want to go with it. There was a ward up on that top side, right by the Alpha Harpy. It just faded away right after... Preds had walked over it, so very quick on the trigger to walk away from that one. Great play by Ekron, keeps himself alive. Silent's going to get a little bit of poke on the Raiden. That'll be a quick agility out, thanks to the extra movement that she gets when she's up in the air. Uh, this is the matchup which I'm really going to be having a look at. It's Brot versus Gunter. I mean, I, Gunter was probably one of the you know shining lights of Donkey Hoof in the last week. And he's going up against Brot, and we don't have to tell you just how good Brot is. He was the main reason that Smiley Face were able to take games off of Belt Slap. The main reason that they actually do find themselves here into the uh, SCC. That was on the back of his Vulcan. But now he's onto, this, he's onto Merlin, a more traditional uh, high tier mid laner over the Vulcan. How, how's he going to fare on this more, you know, pick, this, this pick that more teams will have more practice against? I mean, I imagine even at this level of play, every mid laner has to have some kind of Merlin in their god pool. It's just going to be a matter of when the team recognizes how good that Merlin is, what do you go to next? We know what Frost goes into. But what is Gunter going to go into whenever the Merlin is away, when the magical ADCs are taken away from them? What is, you know, what is going to kind of be the answer in game number two for them? They're going to try and go for a blue buff invade here on the right hand side. Ultimate out of Mogao sets up for the fatal strike and through the skies. Come silence to help set up for the kill as well. Preds low, no dash available, no beats either. And Mogao picks him up. Two kills on the board for Smiley Face. And that just comes out of a good pressure onto this blue buff. The early game invades are coming out strong here for Smiley Face. Puts him back into the lead, even though it's only to the tune of about 300 gold. XP difference completely even. But it's not like you can see just how much pressure you have to put onto this Alcorn jungle to stop him getting off to that early start. It's paid dividends here for Smiley Face. Wow, look at the level difference in the in the hunters here. Whoa. Now Smiley Face pushed a little bit far back. E Chrome has to has a pretty oh, big wave just... he has to deal with here, but wrapping around the pack side is Yakin looking for the knockup. Gonna get it. Gonna set up for the persistent gust, and the belt from Yakin will be enough to finalize the kill. Another one on the board for Donkey Who. I was wondering when Ekron was going to use his uh, Valkyrie's discretion, when he was going to use his Banish, when he was going to use his Beats. They were all down. <laughs> I had a look and it's just, oh, he doesn't have those tools available to him because Raiden's forced him out already. And that just comes around that level disparity. Two levels down, gone to about a level and a half now, just because Raiden's had to back. 
and Ekrom did get some of that weight before he unfortunately died. But it is a good start from both teams here. Smiley Face got their pressure over to this right-hand side, which you wouldn't really expect from a Guardian into a Warrior. But Don Qf, they've pivoted over to this left-hand side and put their eggs back into Raiden. And honestly, not the worst player on the team to kind of put the eggs into that basket for you. going to get the whoop on a Raiden, but a quick turn around. The belt's going to force out the Valkyrie's discretion. Ooh. Puts Raiden under half health. And now Silence has to back off, make sure that his carry can stay alive on the back end of it. Only the boots online for the time. Fred's going on to Mogao, but Fred's is at half health himself. You need to be careful, but he's got the backup of Donkey Hoof to make sure that Mogao forced all the way back towards their speed buff. Zergo so is again looking for the invader, gets it off successfully. Raiden not going to have access to that attack speed bonus from that purple buff. I Meanwhile, well, Ekrum's going to get his picked up, so... You, know, you never know, that could be the turn in point that Chrome needs just to get himself to the point where he can clear wave without needing to use his um, pulse twice. Oh God, I just had to watch his look like his back camp was stolen away by Preds. Another whoop on to Raiden. He's going to have the agility. It's going to force it to the airstrike early on, but a beautiful predict out of the through the sky. So Silas will find Ryan. He has the beads. One knock-up is good to save his life for a little bit, but not for too much longer as Ekrom finds the final pulse shot. That prediction out of silence. That was so good. Speaking of good, the defense over here on this right-hand side. No access to Assassin's Blessing, but they still managed to secure their blue buff. Omogao's playing this one lights out. I, I think it just comes down to the fact that he's got those tank boots online. It's really difficult for Preds to find anything going in, in this game. Not able to gank onto this solo lane. Not able to gank onto the duo lane because it's pushed underneath the tower. Brods is playing quite safe in the mid lane as well. And it's just getting evaded on 24-7 by Zerika Zek. Brots level 11 on this Merlin. We're only barely nine minutes in. He's hit that level 11 mark already in this mid lane. Just these mid laners honestly have just been left to free farm here. And everybody's focused so hard in this dual lane that the mid laners are just getting all the farm. Yeah, that's good for both of those teams. Both of these teams, actually. I think I would favor Donkey Hoof a bit more if I was going to give uh, mid lane farm to an Oleron versus a Merlin. I just think the older one's going to have a bit more of an impact in this game, thanks to that sanctified field. You know, Jokic's going to get erased here. Ikram going to go to that Valkyrie's discretion. Two shots is all it takes. And what was a difficult position for Ikram to be in, he's caught back up. Two kills to the good. Yeah, he, he has completely shook off the dive that happened to him earlier on under his tier one, because now he's got two kills up on the board for himself and one step closer to finishing up that ring of Akata. And then who in reality is going to try and stand up to a Freya at that point? Um, no one, apart from another Freya, who's even more ahead. So we're just going to get another Freya on the enemy team? Uh, we're going to somehow get some Morgan shenanigans to... I mean, I know she was banned here, but Gold Fury started up by Smiley Face, and, uh, well, they have a Merlin and a Freya, so that one's going to go down very, very quickly. No no chance to respond out of Donkey Hoop on that one. No, I'll say we're just going to go and have it as casual or blind pick instead. Just have everybody pick Freya. Yeah, that'd be hype. Can we get a can we get a ten Freya game and just see what happens? I'd I'd like to see that at some point. That 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 could be a, a game mode at at some point. Yeah, you know, one of it, those uh, match of the days. Oh yeah, or it could be like at the invitation, like one of the pro invitationals where they do like the silly game mode kind of thing. That'd be one. You know, the all pick everybody's just Freya. Oh yeah, I like that. I remember the one that they did on uh, the Clash map where they all had to pick mages. Oh god, don't remind me of that one. I, I think the worst one was when they were doing you know, the, the assault match where they had to do all pick assault and one team was like, you know what, we're just gonna play hell because hell's a fun thing. Speaking of fun, we're experiencing all four levels of fun going up against Idle Silence on the Horus, utilizing the full rotation of his kit. I was born in the dankest of streams. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. Sorry about that. We had to make sure that the hamsters were all running in the wheels in the back. And unfortunately, one of them had to take a little bit of a water break. But we're back. Bringing you guys the action here. Still, same old game. We haven't, we haven't lost any new action onto it. 5-2 still reads the scoreboard here for Smiley Face and Donkey Hoof. They bring it right back into you. Uh, Iceland is going to go aggressive on the Gutter straight away. Out comes the Sanctified Field. Iceland is going to be trapped in that with no CC immunity to boot. Does get away. Preds is looking at the execute. Does manage to find it, but almost dies because of Ekron's base attack before he goes into the sky. Looking aggressive once more. Sergei Zex next on the list. A double kill for the Alphong. Raiden picks up the third, and Donkey Hoof put back to 5 and 5. Thanks to a beautiful team fight.
And that Sanctified Field is putting in immense work for the side of Donkey Hoof. And Ekrom has to turn and burn onto Yakin. And he's doing a pretty damn good job of it as he takes it out of three quarter, takes out three quarter of his health. Beautiful. But unfortunately, he loses the rest of his health bar to the CC chain out of Bevy Monster. That'll be a four for zero swing for Donkey Hoop. That was such a clean CC chain there onto the fray. If it's waiting for the beats to go away, Jochen flops. Then the second the flop just goes all the way back down, Bevy Monster then goes in for uh, the Fearless. Preds finishes it off with the kill. Great team fight overall there from Donkey Hoof. Nets them all the way up to six kills. Unfortunately, they couldn't get anything else off of that uh, off that play because the gold period was still down. Tier 1 tower on the left-hand side living on a prayer over there. Mid lane tier 1 still all done fine and dandy. So nothing really of value lost there for Smiley Face except a bit of pride and the lead. Well, Silent's going to make sure that that tower does not fall down for the moment. He'll stand by and... Hold on to that minion wave. Might hold it for Ekro. Might be the nice support, even though nobody holds the wave for the support. He might be the nice one to hold it for the carry. Moga and Bevy just having a little bit of a fight for the totem still, as we still have at least one more spawn of it that they'll have to deal with. It looks like Moga got the better end of that once they're able to get that little bit of a buffer in Steam. Yeah, but he is two levels down to Mogao on to the well, well, sorry, a level and a half that he gets that extra bit of experience. But his rotation there was what made you know, a big difference. A lot of to pick up an extra kill, but it was all really the fight of Preds in that last engagement. Looks like they could be going for more here. Feeling the hooves a little bit are Donkey Hoof and just looking aggressive onto this mid lane. Gunter by himself isolated, and that's what Smiley Face have realized here. They're going to go straight for this mid lane mage. I'm going to say mid lane hunter mage. And looks like the execute's going to come out. Sergei Zek picks up the kill. Going to be traded out in time for Preds. Immediately that final strike, body blocked out by Fred, so he'll fall very quickly. Brod's going to use the Arcane a little early, so he's not going to be able to pull back Bevy. Blinking from Mogao's going to get the slow on with the breath and picking up one with the ultimate. The stun not going to be on the mark for one, but from the other side, I decide to pick it up with Fred's. Grabs Brod's out of the tower with the execute, diving down into the mid tier two tower, looking for silence, but he's taking a little bit more poke. Then he bargained for it down to a quarter health himself. The rest of the team back the way, but it went for two in favor of Donkey Hoop. Donkey Hoop playing extremely well as a coordinated team here. You know, coordinated five, man. Smiley Face in both the past two fights have been caught just with four. First fight, Lemogal was the one just staying in lane. And this time, it seems Ekron was the one who, did, who elected to not make the rotation, but instead get some pressure over onto that left-hand side tier one tower. Still doesn't pick it up. And the Pyromancer is going to go away to Donkey Hoof. Who have put themselves into a commanding position here. They could give it the gold fury as Sergei Sek rotates to help Ekrom out with it. Preds realize this, this is going on. It's going to be here to defend. Oh, he's going to look for a kill if it's possible. Oh, Ekrom going to get slammed by the dragons, but it's not enough. And with his stealth down, it'll be enough to force them away and get the objective for Donkoof instead. So Primal Fury goes the way of the red squad. A great play out of Preds. Fantastic play so far from out of the jungler who's... Uh, Really turned the tide of this game. Had a bit of a shaky start, wasn't able to get anything really going. But once those team fights have started to happen in the jungle rather than in the lane, once Freya has had to push a bit further outside of the safety zone, once he's able to wrap around the back of these team fights, he's been playing lights out. I mean, you can just see from start to finish of this play going into the south without even being caught onto a war, nobody knows that he's there and he just sneaks right around the back. By the time they even recognize he's there, Ekrom is already at, what, 10% health and quickly turn around and take the objective away. Yeah, unfortunately, Preds didn't have access to his purification beads. Otherwise, I'm sure he's going to pop them just to land back down as quickly as possible and take out Ekrom before he's able to get into the sky with the Valkyrie's discretion. But the shell coming out from Ekrom. Yeah, so it's a triple shell here uh, from Smiley Face. You don't usually see this, but Freya, the ADC, has picked up a magical shell here. I, I, it's just mainly because those two extra block stacks that you get from upgrading it go up against this triple basic attack composition, who, as you can see, can shred objectives quite easily. Fire Giant already on the half. It's only 16 and a half minutes in, and they're going for it. Mogao jumping into the back. Quick ultimate. He's going to get the beads out of Raiden and force everybody off of the Fire Giant. Airstrike out of Raiden as he's trying to close some kind of distance. Get away. Zerga going to get the ultimate out just to get away, but jukes out Bevy, who's unable to hit him with the Lawbringer. Frost. Being chased down, but immediately turns around. One shell is going to keep them alive as Preds falls. Bevy pushes two back. 
Pepe himself is getting shredded by e -Chrome. Up to the Valkyrie's discretion, looking for something, but not enough damage. He has so much health online. Blinging from Moga is going to get some slow off. And e -Chrome just going to try and pump those shots in. But it's Bronson who gets one on the back. And Mogao cleans up, baby. Yakin stunned under the tower. e -Chrome and Mogao diving, but just not enough damage. Mogao going to have that mantle of rock. Yakin juking as long as he can, but a great stun out of Mogao helps to clean up the support. Well, Gunter is in a bit of trouble if it's tier two tower here. It's gonna be, it's gonna be okay because Brotz unfortunately misses that ice strike. He comes not giving up the oh, chase. Well, how comes the banish? How comes the pulse of radiate combo? And actually turns for the page, but he does trade out for Ecro. That's gonna help them just a little bit to stifle this uh, tower push. And I don't think they get the tier two tower because of that kill. No, it, it looks like they're gonna make the smart move and back away from that one. But Preds might spot Brotz here. He doesn't have any mana and barely half of a health bar. Zerga pops out of the jungle to maybe dissuade him for a little bit, but Zerga lost a quarter of his health instantly. Preds getting turned on by all four players, and Mogal with the leap in. He'll make sure to get that cleanup kill. Killing spree for the solo laner. Yeah, that's uh, one of the big advantages of getting anti heal along early. Brot's got that Divine Ruin first item. Sir Gazek got his uh, Brawl's Beat Stick online first item. Just 80% anti heal applied immediately. And here comes Mogao just to steal a bit more from you before that's even applied. So Brad's not able to heal whatsoever in that fight. And it, it just gets erased because of it. Yeah, that's kind of one of the namesakes. Kind of, uh, not nearly to the same extremity that an Anubis is, but Alquang very dependent on that lifesteal once he gets it online. I mean, if he can't heal up, those dragons, yeah, they hit hard, but how is he going to stay alive during that time? Especially if he's got a Freya hitting him for a thousand per basic. If he's got Merlin Void ticking on him consistently. If he's just been stunned out by the Achilles. It, it's a very different world here for the Alcorn than when he was first released uh, with this current kit. And, you know, the meta has changed significantly. New items have come out for him, which have helped him, you know, rise in the ranks to be one of the most feared junglers out there right now. But there are ways around him, and this is, you know, a good demonstration of the fact that not all the top tiers are as invincible as they seem. I think the big staple to that, as you mentioned earlier, was the anti-heal that's online. Two forms of major anti-heal, 80% just between the mid and jungle, and that doesn't even count Cerberus passive, that doesn't count any other potential anti-heal that gets picked up later on, like a Pestilence or a Contagion. Now uh, with mid lane, Yokin is out in no man's land and is going to get shredded out. Serga Zek credited with the kill. Gunter caught out as well, executed before he can even get that sacrifice field off up and running. Two kills for free there for Smiley Face as they take the lead back for themselves. It looks like they might be gearing up here for the, for the Fire Giant. And with a three member strong Donkey Hoof available, I don't know if they're going to be able to defend this. It, it looks a little bit rough there for Smiley Face after that second gold fury or fighting around that gold fury right before he got taken the second time around but Preds and honestly has turned this entire fight around just by dealing that objective away and has now led to smiley face picking up the fire giant Dr. Hoof immediately going to turn over and, and try and get this Oni Fury for the team, but a quick turnaround silence not able to get that one in time so Dr. Hoof will get the objective but who's going to make it out as Bevy pushes one against the wall doesn't have his dashes but does have the ultimate so bevy makes it out looks like oh, everyone i'm talking if we'll get out but they trade a fury for a fire giant is that really worth it potentially more here as your two tower under stress well i, I don't think they're going to be able to defend that fire giant regardless if they went over there or not so I, I think getting the gold fury is what they really was the best play they could have done at that point they're going to lose the tier two but threads might be able to get the tier two over here in trade but they do trade out as best as they can in this situation and they're not even going to get punished for the fact that they do, you know, get that fury. They do get the tier 2 tower on the left-hand side. And it's up to Smiley Face now to find these objectives where they don't get it returned onto them. Let's see over onto the solo lane side. Raiden is going to make sure to push up one Oni wave. The other one's pushing up or already taken out in mid. So there's really not much to be gained from it. Just Fire Giant as a net positive. For the side of smiley face all five members still with it around their waist and looking potential push up here into the mid lane silence finds bevy with the knock up but i mean bevy has uh health to spare health for days i mean I, I thought the movement speed hp build was gone but apparently it's still here to stick around it's still here just not as prevalent as it used to be because of the fact that it no longer gives you as much movement speed and it didn't nerf the health just a slight bit 
And instead, uh, left hand side, Preds again looking to split push. Um, I thought he was playing Alcorn, not Loki. I, I mean, it's just magical Loki that's not a tank. I was going to say just magical Loki, but that's Kabrakin in this instance for it. But Pyromancer taken by Smiley Face. So far, only one tower has been taken with this objective. So I haven't gotten a ton of value off it yet. And really, that tower was just a trade for trade tower more than anything else. So we call it a, a net Pyromancer at this point for him. Uh, looks like they're going to look to push down even more, though. Tier 2 on the right-hand side is their next calling card. And it looks like Don Q if we're going to let this one go again. Unless you can scrounge up the members as quickly as possible. Raiden going to back to base. going to fly in next to that Jingwei's passive. Um, rapid reincarnation. Really helpful there for the hunter. Pred still floating around this jungle. Looking to just try and get the wrap around. But with the amount of wards put out here by Smiley Face and Don Q combined. It's running through a minefield here. Uh, one of the hardest parts for Smiley Face is. Who's going to do the major brunt of the objective damage. The tower damage more than anything. I mean. Ekro and Broad's both magical base, so they're not going to be hitting the tower very hard compared to having a traditional hunter like Raiden would be on the Jing Wei, but they do manage to get both of the remaining tier 2 towers. That's all towers stripped off the map for Donkey Hoof. Only the birds left alive to defend against the Titan. I think they'll be quite happy defending underneath the uh, underneath those birds, thanks to the fact that they do have that all-around sanctified field. They found Mogao sleeping just a tiny bit. Going to force out Mogao's ultimate. And also going to force out across the skies from Horror. So two big team fight ultimates used there by Donkey Hoof. Well, you spoke by Smiley Face, sorry. Thanks to the aggression from Donkey Hoof. The one big thing I'm looking at here is the four level difference in the supports right now. I silence up, uh, over Yakin and, uh, well, Yakin going to go right back to the Fountain Hill. Have to wait a little bit longer before he can join the action. Is it, it's up for a 5v4 here into the mid lane. Minions are on the way as well, so they'll be able to push straight up into this. I silence the front line for them, and Raiden and Gunter push so far back. Only Bevy's going to have an option into here. He's going to get a three-man Fearless onto the back end, but he's already under quarter health himself. Up to the sky is Ekron with the Valkyrie session, healing from uh, basically nothing back to full, thanks to the life steal that he's built up for himself. And, well, right back onto the Phoenix they go, down to a quarter health. Perez has to use his beads to get out of the stun, and the mid lane Phoenix will fall. And this is... So, the thing that I notice in this game, it's just a difference of one thing. One team has built anti-heal, the other team hasn't. And in fights, you've just seen exactly what the biggest issue of dealing with a Freya is. The fact that she will heal up so much. Thanks to the fact she has passive lifesteal, she has Ring of Akate online, she's got uh, the Typhon's Fang online as well. Got the Power Boots, which also gives some lifesteal. So th there's a lot of sustain in this kit here for Freya and in this build. And you look inside the Donkey, there's no anti-heal. It, yeah. it, it, it just boggles the mind, the fact that there is zero anti-heal at 25 minutes into the game for this team. Yeah, I mean, there's not a drop of it. I honestly wouldn't even be upset if Ekrom sold this Hunter's Blessing for a Toxic Blade to just further dip into that anti-heal with it. I mean, he'd be able to apply it so easily with it. I mean, I, personally, it's one of my favorite things to slot in when you're going against this much healing, but onto the Fire Giant, they will go and... Ekrom alone alongside Brots is doing so much damage to him. I mean, Fire Stance with Merlin as well as just Freya damage is disgusting at this stage of the game. Down to a quarter health, Fire Giant. No way anyone's getting that one. And Smiley Face will pick up their second Fire Giant of the game. Might be looking for more. Dunk in and the ultimate out of the support. Yakin is going to help with Preds to pick up one. Transformation into the Arcane Stance. Goes the Merlin. Brots trying to heal for the rest of his team. But Raiden will quickly be sent, or be quickly sending one back to the base. Still trying to get out of his broads, barely gonna make it through. Fred's unable to get him, but with one dragon call, will find him. Fred's barely alive himself. Everybody's so low, and Silence doing anything that he can to stay alive. But when you're staring down the barrel of the gun, it's gonna fire back. Finally, manages to get through. A great dash to the minions will spare his life, and back to the fountain he goes. Just, they, they get the fire giant, but they were still a bit too low to turn around to try and fight their smiley face. And I, I, I like bastard doggy for not having anti-healing. Well, the fire giant just gave it to them in spades there. And once more, they would, Preds was allowed to rotate around the back and finish off the good work, the good engage from Yokin. So he manages to leap in, gets a double ultimate off, one of which was on Ekrom, and he was then target number one. Get rid of the Freya, job complete from Preds. Who's next? Oh, it's going to be Brotzed on the Merlin. I'm going to let Raiden deal with Sir Gazirk in the back. Look at this. Preds just casually walking around the back. 
goes into his invis. You should see, no one turns around to look at him. Ice Hunter's going up into that sky, but already Chrome's dead before he can land back down, and Sprots is almost taking the same thing. I mean, who needs Antio when you can just 100 to 0 the carry in an instant? I mean, Preds with that wraparound topped off the belly flop and the intoxicate out of the box just meant that there was no chance for the Freya to get any healing, to get any kind of safety through. And, and you can see this man is living on 1 HP in a dream and continue to keep that push through. Preds really stepping up big for his team in these fights. Yeah, 6, 4, and 1 on the outcome. Not the flashiest scoreline, but it's one that... Um... Well, compared to the rest of his team, shows exactly who's making the plays in these fights. I think it is pretty clear that Preds has been the standout player here for Don Youth in this game. Not to say that the rest of the members aren't playing well as well. They have been playing well as a team, as a unit, which is one of the big things which, you know, they didn't show last week. So it's big improvement so far here from Don Youth, and that's all we can really ask for them so far. Yeah, coming into this game, that was kind of our, our, our big talking point was how much has Don Youth improved from week one to two? Now, the difference also from one to two is they're going from the poppies to their former SOC, you know, rivals and, and possible screen partners at the SOC level now both here in the SCC. So it's a huge world of difference, but Dog Hoof have really shown improvement in just their play style from these last two weeks. Mid Phoenix is about to respawn. I think Smiley should look to play onto the fact that it has now just respawned. One person goes over to split push that objective. Forces somebody over there to defend it, and you try and get a four versus four going on to the right hand side. Looks like instead they're gonna dip and leave that right hand side Phoenix alone. Go for this weakened Phoenix as quickly as they can. Up to the sky goes Horus, looking for Preds on the backside. No, they're actually gonna rotate all the way over to the left hand side Phoenix, and it's gonna be landing in there without any minions, no backup protections removed. But looks like they're gonna be able to shred down half of his health before the rotation from Donkey come back in. Gonna be all from Moga to throw Yakin all the way to the back, but Bevy is still pushing in against Ekrom. Zekfad Field comes down to the back line as a defensive mechanism, but everybody besides Zek is so healthy on the side of my face. Meanwhile, much lower health bars for Donkey Hoof. They tried to go into that fight, but they got zoned out by Brot so early. Yakin with the belly flop in into the belt to get some damage right in. Of course, the egg is just so he doesn't die to the Valkyrie's discretion, and Preds just get shredded in the back, but they trade out and get Zerga. Hunter with the kill. But the left side, Phoenix was the target, and that will fall down to Smiley Face. Uh, they're gonna flop it in again. Is Yorkin looking to try and put the pressure onto Broth? Baby Boss that goes in the back as well. Finds Ekrom as his target, but unable to do the damage. Raven, though, has the damage in space. Going after Broth as well, thanks to that extra movement speed coming out from the uh, Atalanta's bow. Unable to get him just yet. Warmer base attack should do it. Over the walls, not gonna find it, is Gunter. So, Brock's still living on the slither of health. Son is going to be the call here instead from Rain and the Bevy Monster as they decide to split targets. Brock gets his way back into the base, and I have no idea how much to survive. Silence sacrifices himself for it. But mid Phoenix still stands. Left hand side Phoenix, the one furthest away from the fire giant, is the casualty instead. I mean, you're talking about the one HP in a dream. That was Brods there as he was trying to escape the clutches of Raiden and somehow managed to do so. The support of Mogal and Silence coming through, able to get their mid laner back to safety, get him back to the base. That's going to set up for Fire Giant. About 10 seconds left till it respawns. I doubt that anybody seems really just going to jump the gun on it. They're going to want to make sure to get a couple of kills or start a fight there before anything else. We're here 30 minutes in. I mean, we're getting close to the end of the item builds and the and whatnot here. Still haven't seen Ekrom sell that Hunter's Blessing yet. No, I think he's gonna he's gonna have to look to sell it soon. Looks like it's going to be Donkey Hoof that starts up this objective and they're shredding down this enhanced fire giant very quickly. Slow on the rotations here, smiley faces. It looks like it's gonna be secured here. Donkey Hoof did do indeed secure this and Mogal leaves into that sanctified field. Ooh. It's just lambs at a slaughter at that point, and Donkey Hoof gonna run away with the tails between their legs and fire giant on all five members. Preds though. Oh, bit greedy going for that blue buff. Could be caught out here. Sergazek, Brots, and Ephraim don't want anybody to get away with that fire giant. Not able to pull anybody back is Brots. Unable to slow person outside of Gunter there. And looks like they're going to get away with it. And they got to be careful grouping up like that. Even inside the sanctified fields where they think it's a lot safer for them. All four of them got hit with an ice bolt and Preds almost fell because of it. Oh, We're going to see the replay for Brots. Then I don't know where he was going and who just allowed him to back at the Phoenix, but. Great play and great distraction out of the solo and the support to make sure that he oh. did manage to get out of there. It's Smiley Face looking for something. They're going up into the sky. They have the ultimate to try and go in, but where are they going to go? He's just going to wrap it right back around. It looks like somebody may have spotted it out into the sky. 
And, and that, that was enough of a call there for Silence to pull away from him. A great attempt. I think it was good game knowledge, though, by Preds as well. Not to fall for the fact that there was, you know, the, the ambush, the trap going around there. No wards to tell him that that was going on. Uh, no vision there whatsoever, thanks to, you know, minions or s one of his uh, teammates running around there. Nothing. Just good old, I smell a trap. I'm not walking there. And that just negates the play there from Smiley Face. And Dark Youth, they've extended this game when it looked to be a bit, you know, slightly out of their reach when Smiley Face were knocking on the doors of their Phoenixes, sub-25 minutes. Oni Fury is back and respawn, and that'd be a great opportunity for Smiley Face so they can get that keep pressure in the other lanes while they try and make sure to keep that left one down but donkey for the ones who are going to be the jump right onto it already down under half health and only fury will go the way of donkey hoof no contest from smiley face so they're going to keep this game pretty much uh dead even here 2000 experience nothing 200 gold basically literally nothing a couple of wards between each players if anything at that on hoof have bring brought this game right back to them right back to a dead even matchup their bird is down for the moment but I don't think that they're too worried about that as the Oni Fury will, or the Oni Wave spawns in and they'll make sure to keep it pushed up. And looks like uh, Donkey Hoof are going to try and push up this left hand side as well. Look to get the Phoenix that's furthest away from the Fire Giants just so that they're able to get it a bit quicker. But don't forget, it's Enhanced Fire Giant. No more backdoor protections for Donkey Hoof to worry about if they're looking to split push or look to just push in by themselves. Could be another potential across the skies. Gank here from Silenced and the boys on Smiley Face. But again, Preds is sniffing these out. He's seen the grouping up. He doesn't want to push it into the tower without the minions there, without you know some protection coming out from Smiley Face as well. So just waits and is patient and gets rewarded for it. And Smiley Face, they're the ones defending up here against the odds. Donkey of pushing onto this left-hand side Phoenix and mid at the same time. It's going to be tier 2 tower and mid down because everybody left the jungler alone to do his own thing. Yakin going to take a little bit of damage from Broth, but into the back line goes Bevy. Putting Ekrom about half health, but Ekrom is healing all that back with the basics. Going to be forced out to beat the Lawbringer's too slow to get out of there, and Ekrom will pick up the solo laner out of Donkey, but Preds manages to solo Surga all the way in the back line. Up into the skies goes Silence, but it's not even necessary as Broth is able to get the cleanup kill two for one. Smiley face hold their base, but they lose their mid Phoenix. Yeah, mid Phoenix got taken away by Preds by himself. He also killed Circusek by himself. Forced two people around to kill him and almost got away from them and forced out I Silence Ultimate by himself. And the the rest of the members of Donkey have struggled to try and push in and impose himself on this left hand side Phoenix. They did get some good damage onto Ekron, but you saw just the amount of sustain that he was getting against Bevy Monsters here. And that you know that's someone with protection, someone with some damage mitigation. That, if he if he hits uh, Raiden or Gunter with one basic attack, he's healing half his health. Yeah, let's not also forget to mention there's um, zero anti heal still on the side oh. of Donkey Hoof. Oh. Uh, even a, a, a pestilence, a contagion, something through here has got to be picked up because Ekron went from half health to full, just smacking Bevy for standing in front of him. I mean, I, I would expect a Toxic Blade to come out here for Gunter instead of the Boots, but that it should have it come online instead of the Rod of Tahuti instead, you know, maybe delay the rest of his build after getting the, uh, the Titan's Bang to get that item online. Yeah, like I said, Shadow Steel Shuriken, is, it's, a, it's a good item these days. People just have this, you know, stigma about it. it. It was a good item before the buffs. It's a great item now. 40% anti-healing when you crit somebody is a good item. I don't care about the stats because I am reducing the enemy, uh, enemy hunter's lifesteal for it, and I'm able to win the trade because of it. And not to mention, you're building that on a god who already has crit in their kit and has built into three other crit items. I'm sorry, now four crit items when we bring the poison star into this one. I mean, at this point, there's got to be one kind of anti-heal for this Donkey Hoof team because they're just allowing Ekron to free cast and free heal against anybody that stands up to him. I think they're just hoping the fact that they can kill somebody within the CC chains that they have because they, they do have quite an extended CC chain, especially if they are caught into that uh, sanctified oh. field. But Bevy Monster is caught in a world of hurt, caught with his pants now, caught with no health anymore. And looks like the engage is going to happen here. Everyone's rushing forward. Guns is going to drop that sanctified field defensively. And that's just going to cut the team fight in half. Frost is going to make sure to zone Raiden out. He's pushed all the way back to speed buff. We'll be able to use that rapid reincarnation to get right back to 
fight. Preds. Preds has repped all the way around the backside, and I'm pretty sure he's walked over at least a ward or two at this point. And they're still looking for him. Looks like Ekron may have spotted him out here. But Preds, he he's got the ankle breaking shoes on there, and he's able to make sure to keep away from them. Might be looking for a turnaround to the back. Is he going to go for a 1v1 here against Ekron? Because Sirga is not going to let that happen. No, as Preds is finally going to get spotted out there by Sirga Zek. He's going to try and hide a bit more. Silence is the one that's caught out, though. Manages to get away thanks to that heal dash. Preds caught out. Preds gets out. Silence gets out as well. Heavy Monster also managed to get out thanks to that Lord Breaker. But a huge different engagement there from Yokin. No one's there to follow up though, for the rest of his team. Chrome goes into the sky and uses that Valkyrie discretion to the best of his abilities. Preds goes in, trades out for Brods. I'm sorry, can we, can we just talk about that engage from Yokin again? I mean, four man, five man flop into an intoxicate immediately after. Huge play by Yakin, but like you said, no follow up on it. They trade out one for one, and that's not the mage that they wanted to take down. Brots, yeah, he's strong and all, but Ekrom is still standing at full health. Any objective is open for them, but a great turnaround play. One ability is all it would have taken to do anything off of that engagement from Yakin, but unfortunately, it just wasn't there. We saw some c come out there with a the persistent gust. Out, uh, out of the dual lane, but I mean, uh, that one persistent gust is not enough. Immediately up into the skies with the Freya and just one for one trade out of it. Out of that, you get a one for one? Uh, that, that's just why, you know, these teams are missing a Merlin in, in their mid lane rather than the, uh, rather than the old run. Just, just imagine if you had a Poseidon or a Scylla ultimate oh coming God. out of the top of that. That would have been unbelievable. So one of the get let off the hook there. Let off Love the hook by a half. I don't know. I'm not saying Ulrun's a bad, but he's a fantastic mid laner. And it's, you know, for the strategy that Spiderfist are going for, sorry, for the strategy that Donkey are going for, it's probably one of the better picks they could have done. But just, they probably are lamenting the fact that they don't have that big thousand and a half damage ultimate or thousand and a half damage ability that could come out from somebody when that sort of thing happens. I mean, you get a, a, a five man belly flop into Intoxicate and all you're sitting there is asking, where's the crush follow-up? Where's the I'm a monster? Where's the Kraken? Where's literally anything? Un unfortunately, like you said, they just have an Oleron on the backside. They just have a Jingwei for some follow-up onto it. And it's, that's just not enough when you have an engagement like that out of Yakin. Probably one of, you could put that one into a highlight reel for how, how beautifully executed that combo was for him. Or maybe you could just put it on there for how poorly grouped up Smiley Face was. In a normal fight, they, they all died there off of that. Uh, normal fight. Preds is going to get caught up. Fachi manages to find him. Does Silas. The Silas is going to go through the skies. Um, Looks to try to chase him. Sergo Zek is one of the people that follows with. Maybe one on the other side. Brots, Bevy Monster, Ekrom. Bevy Monster gets away thanks to that Orbringer. And looks like Preds also gets out from his little skirmish thanks to the backup from the rest of the members of Donk Huth. But has Smiley Face forced Donk Huth out enough to start up this Fire Giants? They think so. Oh, they're going to try and go for it here. This will be their third yeah, one Merlin. of the game. Down to a quarter health. And Merlin and the Frey are doing quite a bit of damage for it. Silence and Mogar are going to go to the back to try and zone. But Flop steal again. Donka Hoop steal it away with all the Yakin and Preds. Preds at half health. But Gunner takes down Ice Silence and Ekrom falls as well. Getting tossed up in the sky is Zerika. And on landing, thrown against the wall. And back to the fountain. T two kills for Gunter in the yeah, fight. Yeah. Only two left with Smiley. I think, I think they might be able to end here. Just uh, right and stop chasing over on the right hand side. Yeah, he's, he's going to clear minis instead. Brots caught out here by Jokin on this back is forced into that flicker. Look who's giving chase. It's Bobby Monster. Going to go for that fearless combo. And let's just try and get the kill onto this Merlin before he gets back to Fountain. Unable to do so. One more basic attack should do it. He's running away from the Fountain, running away from the game. And Donghyu behind for most of it. Lambasting for not getting any anti heal against the team. Come out on top. We asked you at the start what has Donkey Hoof done to improve themselves from week one to week two? And I would say it's uh, they actually put a good team comp together this time around. And not only that, they were able to execute on that team comp. They come through struggling for the most part for the first half of the game, but really pulling it together at the end. And I, I think it was just a bit of. Uh, it's a bit of a misplay uh, on my end for Smiley Face at the very end. They went for the Fire Giant despite the fact they didn't really win the fight beforehand. They didn't really force out uh, Donkey Hoof enough to justify going for the objective. And they get punished for it in the most 
violent way possible, three people just instantly killed. And one of which was Ekrom. Ekrom got evaporated by the wraparound from Preds. He was the one that actually managed to steal the fire giant, I believe, thanks to him just going in this, using that dragon call and using that um, you know storm call uh, ability. The Alcorn was just too much for him to handle. Yeah, I mean, when it came down to it at the end, they said, to hell with Antiheal, we'll just kill them instead. Ekrom didn't even have a chance to get his damage off in that last fight. As soon as the fight began, he, Preds goes into the back line, turns and burns onto the carry instantly. I don't even think he had a chance to get the Valkyrie's discretion off with how much damage was dealt to him right there at the back end side of it. But Dunkhoof, uh, from, the, from the depths of hell, able to bring themselves in and take game number one here against Smiley Face. Yeah, I think uh, the MVP, though, for Donkey Hoof is Fire Giant, because the, the Fire Giant was the one that actually applied the anti-heal to them. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it just it just goes to show you don't necessarily have to. Just use the elements that the game gives you, and you can, you know, find... Life will always find a way. Yeah, thanks to uh, that, 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 that old famous quote. And, uh, you know, Donkey Hoof, they come up game one. Can they close out the set, though, against Smiley Face? I, I think it just comes down to whether they're able to replicate this game and can they find that slice of luck once more? Yeah, I, I think with a little bit stronger early game, they might be able to close it out into the second one a little bit quicker and a little bit smoother this time around, a little bit rough around the edges in that first game. We'll see if they're able to polish that one off as we go into a quick break before we start up game number two. So stick around. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Welcome back to game number two here between Smiley Face and Donkey Hoof in the European side of the Smite Challenger circuit. J-Mac and Alpha Jackal here once again to bring you the action in Donkey Hoof. Week number one, I looked at Donkey Hoof and I just went, this is going to be a really rough phase for them. But after that first game, AJ, I'm, I'm rather impressed with the turnaround they've made. I'm impressed with their resilience. I'm impressed with the improvements that they made in between weeks one and two. I'm still not impressed with their sense of the game itself in the fact that mm -hmm. they still didn't build anti-heal. I, I, I know I'm still pressing on the fact that they still didn't build anti-heal, but you know, it, it's, it's one of the more basic things that should have happened in that game. Um, but you know, the fact that they didn't let just the game get outside of reach of them, the fact that they stuck in there for the entirety of the time and managed to capitalize on the mistakes that Smiley Face made is really, really good for them. And, you know, they could build off of that confidence, the fact that they've taken that first game into this second one. I like to try and, you know, continue, you know, with their momentum. Yeah, we'll harp on things like anti-heal forever because, let's be honest, you should have built anti-heal. It probably would have helped accelerate that game for them by another maybe 10 or 15 minutes. But regardless, in the end, they do manage, he said, to use the map to their advantage and get the anti-heal from the fire giant to start out for them. But uh, it, it, when I'm looking into going into this next set of picks and bans, I'm not giving Freya back to Ekrom. Oh, no, I'm not giving Freya to, to Ekrom. And if I'm on Smiley Face, I'm not letting Al Kwong through to Preds either. So those those are definitely two different bans, which I'm expecting, which mm -hmm. means you could be seeing a Morrigan potentially let through, a Cthulhu. Sobek is 100% going to get through this first round of bans. Yeah. If Sobek's one of the bans that still retains, I'm scratching my head forever. Uh, so I, you never know. So Morrigan, Cthulhu, Freya should be these final three bans coming out here from Smiley Face and Doggy Hoof. I really feel it's majority just Mogao that they're taking this Sobek away from. I mean, not taking anything from Yakin, but really, or, or really onto it. Mogao is like the primary reason that they're taking this Sobek off the table. It's one of his better gods into the solo lane. So they're just making sure to kind of put him on something less comfortable. But I mean, he just showed last game the Cerberus as well within his god pool. So I don't understand why we're just seeing a repeat of the same bands. Okay, do we see Freya for 200, please? Um, we may see the Alcorn instead of the Jing no. Wei. That's that's neither of those. Are they going to give both of those over to Donkey Hoof? Um, maybe. I I, I don't know. But it feels like if they do pick Freya, that Swanny Face have baited them into taking the Freya. They're going to take the All Run instead. That's going to be flexed. Most likely going to be over into the mid lane. The Amateur Rasu taken up here for Donkey Hoof. Not elected to go for the outgoing instead, maybe realizing the fact that it did have the troubles in the early game, and it kind of did rely on Smiley Face having a couple of bad fights to get back into the game and get it online. But the Jing Wei pickup really does stop you it deadly detracts from picking up that Freya just because of the matchup that it has. Smiley Face going for something a little more early oriented as they pick up this Bakasura and a Xing Shen 
to round out the first phase of their picks. Not the gods we were expecting to see this time around. Freya still left open if Donkey Hoof wanted to go for the double magic ADC. Instead, they'll lock the Alquang to put that one back into Pred's hands. The Alquan coming out knows, knows exactly what it's going up against with the back of Sora. That cripple field could prove, you know, a bit of an issue for the Alquan. But what, what's more of an issue is the fact that back of Sora is the premier early game snowballing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat all your farm jungler, and Alquan wants to chill out and relax for the first five ten minutes. Back of Sora is not going to let him do that. Uh, the Xing Chen damage over time from this Furious Roar is going to be an issue for the Alkong as well. But uh, much better engage so far here from Smiley Face. Um, I, I do imagine the Xing Chen is going to go over to the solo lane once again. And they could pick up the Horus just for that dual lane synergy. But it, again, it could it could be another flex here. Can we talk about the hardcore respect thrown to Brots here with a Vulcan and a Merlin ban in the second phase by Donkey Hoof? Oh yeah, that they they were not pleased with the fact that he was playing Merlin, and they don't want him to pick up his signature Vulcan as well. Um, uh, who ye going to be the choice here for Donkey Hoof? Again, it could be flexed into the mid lane, but most likely going to go into that ADC position. Kumbakana, we have seen him solo lane, but that was from the Pappies. Do Smiley Face elect to take up that strategy as well? It was one of the big reasons that the uh, Puppies were able to win games against Belt Slap in that uh, second split finals. So it, it could be a strat that teams have them practice out consistently. I, I see a Kumba Karnas team. I see that it's Mogao playing on that team. I, I'm immediately thinking that this Kumba Karnas is going into solo lane for Smiley Face and throwing Xing Qian over into support. Uh, one of the things that one of my biggest gripes of Smiley Face was... They're somewhat more limited god pool. It's kind of the same on Donkey Hoof. Both these teams have a little bit smaller of a god pool than other teams. And for me, especially in that solo lane, I feel that Mogao has the smaller god pool, especially with some of his more oddball picks that he goes with. The Guan Yu, Nox, Kumba Karn are like his three go-tos. So see seeing the Kumba Karn here, I imagine that has to go over to Mogao. Oh, actually, it's going to go to uh, Mogao as well. Not to find out when we get into game, but... Um... Small god pool, have, have you met Mogao? It's um, one of the most diverse god pools out there. He will play literally anything in the solo lane, and he will look to try and make it work. That's because what Mogao does. Well, that's fair. We do see him going on to the Kumba Karn, one of his premier into the solo. We also know that uh, he has a very prominent Hades. I mean, I, I would like to see the Hades pop out at some point. I mean, I, that's the, the one that I knew him from. But coming into the Kuma Karn, giving a little bit of tankiness, and most importantly, a lot of CC in this composition with that one god. Oh yeah, lots of control coming out here for Smiley Face, more so than the last game, and they also have good follow-up to it as well. Don't have the Freya, they don't have the Merlin, but instead they've gone for the Jing Wei. Bit safer in that ADC position, a bit more early game in that ADC position. And brought on his mid lane, Agni. God, we haven't seen him play just yet. I wonder how he's going to play and pilot this one. Does particularly do well into um, well into the older run, but can have a good matchup into this Alquan thanks to the fact that he does have that damage over time. Just reveals and you know stops him from having that stealth against him. It has decent level one, level two clear as well. In comparison with the Yolaran, it's going to be about even onto it. So Brots, he'll have, he'll have no problem here into this mid lane. He won't have to worry about too much as the Sogni will have a lot of safety once that dash is online, as well as the stun available with that Noxious Fumes. And dual lane going about as you expected it to. Uh, ADC is just battling out with each other, looking for some clear where they can. Well, it looks like the pressure is going to go the way of the team with the, uh, with the Xing Shen. It's, it's pretty much almost expected that Xing Chen will get the pressure in the early game, thanks to the fact that he can reduce the enemy's basic attack by 50%, thanks to that Furious Roar. He's going to go immediately for the blink, double a knockup, but single man root, and Raiden's going to eat quite a bit of poke there. It looks like it's going to be returned in kind, unless the persistent gust stops it. You see the, uh, the immediate turnaround as to what happens when a Kepri decides to grab somebody when Jingwei's on the enemy team. Just quickly knock them up and pull them out of that duck immediately through. And you can see it displayed one more time there. Just great heads up play by Ekrom to make sure that silence doesn't get yanked too far back. I wish I was just weren't watching a replay just saying, because that looked like the exact same positioning that happened in last time. And, and another thing that we did get to see there was a quick jungle steal by Serga. He stole that one harpy, and that's the power Bakasura has earlier. He just walks over, eats the harpy, and he's gone. No problem. I mean, that's just what this god has to offer. You lose out on so much potential farm. Silent's going to get pulled back just a little bit, but immediately let go. 
Both these dual lanes go right back into the wave and spit out no problem with themselves. Yakin gonna take a little bit of poke here from E Chrome and Silence. They trade blows. Yakin kind of getting the worst end of it. Well, yeah, just the fact that you can eat the enemy team's mid harpy for free. It, it, it's just one of the big reasons why Bakusura is one of the, if not the top jungle pick right now, alongside the Alcon, the Arachne, the Nemesis. It's, it's a very weird meta when you have those four as your top junglers, when you're used to seeing the Thors, you're, you're used to seeing, you know, the uh, the Hebos from time to time coming out from the jungle, the, the Humbats as well. No, it's uh, it's Arachne, the god that a lot of people lambast as being one of the worst in the game. It's actually one of the best. Yeah, yeah, we're in a strange meta now where it's Bakasura, Nemesis, Arachne are the, like the top junglers that are being picked, and you can throw Alquang into that one though. Alquang has had a lot more ups and downs than these other two gods. I mean, it, though it's nowhere near the set, the days of uh, Bakasura solo. I mean, that was when he really shined in the game was when he got to run that solo lane. Oh, I remember Babakasura versus Osiris pretty much every single match, and that's probably that's what it was every single match in the solo lane of the World Championship was, oh, it's Babakasura versus Osiris yet again, and it, that that was that was some fun times. A lot of danger in that solo lane. A lot of kills happened one versus one, but now it's just you know the eternal slap fight. No one really dies, and both of these teams have elected to have these sort of later game solo laners on their side. Both of them are going to be bringing different dynamics coming uh, into the team fight when they eventually do start to rotate. Fred's trying to make a rotation here, but quickly back to the tower side of Smiley Face will go. So Fred's didn't get any relics out of it, just forced them back under the tower and allowed for a little bit of pressure here for Rain and Yakin to clear out this alpha RP. That's going to clear it right, but I'm unable to find uh, the uh, double bounce that's there. But I'm going to clear it quite quickly. And it is important to have your tank tank up that upper half here in the early game, otherwise, it takes forever to clear as an ADC. That's just a tank people. Bye bye. Mogal just hitting level 6 here into the solo lane, and not very often he's going to be able to take a totem away from an Amaterasu, mm. even though her early clear isn't very strong. It's uh, quite a bit stronger than Akuma Karn's early when it comes to that solo lane. Oh yeah, there's, there's no real reason that the Akuma Karn should take the early toes. And take the uh, mid-game toes. Mm. He's not really going to want to use that C2 to be an ultimate early on. He's just going to want to use it, you know, for damage, just like that. Oh, and Bratz is going to want to use his ults for damage as well. Those free bombs that come through out of the Agni once he hits level 5. Didn't cost him anything to cast them, just... About a 20 second cooldown once those ones come through. And if he wants to reduce it even further by CDR, give him more and more bombs. I mean, more power to the man for it. But uh, Agni, known for his very early and honestly really strong poke once those bombs are online. He's just allowed to use your bomb once and get the stun off. Uh, Preds managed to get the solo kill onto Lomogao. Bit of a cast of death for myself. Said he doesn't want to use that CC immunity ult. Uh, as a CC immunity in the other game, gets punished because it's on cooldown. Uh, well casted there, AJ. Well, we well, go up for the damage boots on the Kumba Karn, so want a little bit more power into it, and a little bit of life steal for for what it's worth. Not really going to get much out of the uh, much life steal out of that as a Kumba Karn solo, but I I'm surprised we're not seeing him rush immediately into the Chronos pendant. I I've seen that quite a few times. Out of these solo lane guardians at a Moga where he rushes a Chronos Pendant for that extra CDR, but this time opting to go into one of the hides. Yeah, you can see the kill just happens over here. Executed, eats right through that passive, and Preds gets out, got free. One of the big changes that did happen is the fact that it now just goes through uh, the uh, making it land down straight away. Get rooted, dash away, finish free, and ADC is stacking up their uh, Hunter's Blasting. I was wanting to finish first for both of these teams. And both of them looking to stack up the Devourer's Gauntlets as well. Rather than looking for the boots, tell me that these ADCs are happy to sit on an island for the next five minutes. Silence pushing up, staying on the middle of a ward, and Yakin and Raiden are there, but the double leap out of Silence to make sure he gets out of that. So ultimate expended out of Raiden very early on, and for pretty much all of nothing gained from it. No relics, no ultimates burned out of Silence. 
Oh, and that's uh, that's one of the biggest wins you can ever have is if you just walk up to uh, the enemy ADC and support and force out one, maybe even both their ultimates, a relic or two, and get out without using anything yourself. That is a huge win there. But it's up to Donkey. It's, it's up to Donkey to make sure they don't get punished for it. It's a smiley face to make sure that they can punish them for it. We'll see if they can really get anything. It is a Jingwei here into the dual lane, so I don't expect a whole lot of action to be taken out of e -Chrome to try and push Raiden back. For the time being, having that ultimate off cooldown means there could be a rotation from Syriga if he wanted to slow him down. But for the time being, they'll just clear the Oracle Harpies and Silence will make his way back to duo. Preds making his way over. But e -Chrome immediately turns tail and runs. No wards there. May have just heard the, vi the, the audio call for it from that teleport, but... Regardless, let's go back to base. Bebby gonna have to dash away from in the ultimate out of Gunter just to continue the zoning to make sure that Brots has to go back to base. He's got about one health left for himself as he's gonna return back. Somehow managing it to make that out with his life. So we're gonna run into Preds. Preds are returning the fire back with the dragon call. We're gonna put them both to about a quarter, but it's healing. Out of Preds gonna make sure that he stays topped off. So it's like it's uh, gonna be just a bit of a wash there. It looked like that we're gonna be able to get something over onto Bevy Monster thanks to rotation from Rot. But good counter rotation from Gunter allows him to save the solo in his life and leave the kill comms still at one to zero. Although they are looking to change that here. Our Don Cube wanted to get onto Aisons, but unable to execute before he gets that second leap away. Both jungler and support living there. Gunter trying to do his best against Brot. Brot wins that trade. Puts Smiley Face on the board, but it looks like he might be taking a loss for this one as well. Oh, Bevy finds the mirror around the wall. Mogao was looking to zone out Preds, but didn't notice that Bevy snuck right up behind him. Dazzling Offensive not going to do anything for him. Mogao is able to make it under the tower very quickly. Great attempt out of Mogao. I like the idea of it, but just wasn't didn't have eyes on his backside. No, you don't expect him to have eyes on his backside. I expect his teammates to just come over and try and help him. Mogao was there to... They'll just try and allow Preds. They'll try to just zone Preds away. But the watch machine comes out. Preds gets out of there as quickly as he can. Yoki could be the first one to die in this fight. He is indeed. Bevy Monster gets rooted. The dash is blocked off. Now, the Mez as well interrupted immediately. Looks like they're trying to kill this Amaterasu. Meanwhile, on the backside, Sergo Zek looking for Preds, looking for the Alquan, the more valuable target. Doesn't able to pick him up. Bevy Monster, one base attack away. Silence cleans that one up as Smiley Face. Put themselves three to two in the league. Uh, somehow, Bevy lived through all of that before finally being taken down. I mean, that's just the power of the minor sustain online for the Samatarasu. It took the tanks quite some time to drop her down, but finally, Bevy will fall. Uh, I mean, Ooh. At, at that point, you. Okay. Okay. All right. Just. Rain's disgusting. I mean, it's not—it's not quite the panda cat gets his, you know, gets a kill from it, but it, it was pretty much as good as a kill. It's just gross. I mean, if he would have gotten the kill off it, it would have been even crazier. But I mean, for the time, Rain just getting those bounces off there. Eventually, we're just gonna see Rain throw a bounce just because he can. It's gonna hit. It's only gonna hit one time, but it's gonna be the like, the nuttiest bounce you've seen. And he's just gonna casually throw them through the jungle. Oh yeah, it's, it's just gonna bounce from dual lane all the way somehow to end up at the mid tier two and gets a kill. That, that, that's one of the big things I want to see is who Yi's bounce now ricochets infinitely. So you can just, until it hits a target. All right, you, you need to calm down with that one. No, you, no, no. You, you, you got to calm down with this infinite ricochet. This is sounding like some April 1st patch notes right here. <laughs> it's a, You're a little late for that one, or maybe you're a little early for the next one. Keep in mind for that point, but for the time being, I, I, I'll keep my regular ricochets, and Prez will keep getting thrown against the wall. And dead before he even hits the ground, Bevy gets thrown right into the hands of Bratz, and Mogao will clean up the kill. Two quick ones for Smiley Faces. They pull themselves back into the lead here, 5-2 to two over Donkey Hoop. Great team play displayed here by Smiley Face and Donkey Hoop just don't have the answer to it. This change up to the Xing Chen in this uh, in this draft has really paid dividends for them. So they're going to go aggressive onto Gunter underneath this mid tier one tower, but he's eating a load of damage for it thanks to the sanctified field. Just I wasn't able to trade out with the same basics. Gunter could have his beat force, gonna force out the Kepri revive as well. Raven still has his Sunbreaker ultimate. 
and that's going to force the disengage from Smiley Face. Quick beads out of Brots as well. Make sure he gets out of the suns and away from the ricochet. So he'll be able to live through that engage. You saw a quick beads out of Gunter in that mid lane. As soon as the stun hit, he thought there was something to follow up. But Brots just baiting the relic out and the ultimate out of Yakin as well. Great play by the mid laner from Smiley Face. And that's going to spell a bit more of a disaster for Donkey Hoof as Gunter's probably going to be the next target from this uh, Blink Whirlwind Rage of Steel coming out from my silence, which so far we've seen two of them come out and two of them have ended up with at least two kills going in the way of Smiley Face. So two kills and two assists for the support there on the uh, on the order side. And he's, uh, like I said, to switch up to the Sheep Chen has uh, really been a detriment, a thorn in the side here for Donkey Hoof in this early game. It just will it continue into this mid game? The, you know, the Horus was great for Smiley Face, but Silence is really putting in work on the Xing Chen. A world of difference it makes when you can press your your ultimate button and immediately things start happening, as opposed to you having to kind of fly around a little bit, play, you know, do a crossword while you're up in the sky waiting. And well, Bevy's gonna have to use their ultimate immediately, get away from Mogao and Zero guys. We're gonna make that rotation through Mogao. Really putting in some numbers here on this Kuma Karn. One, one, and three so far in this game. Well, most of the fights have happened over onto the solo side yet again. This has been a common theme through Smiley Face's gameplay today. It's about that in game one, they really wanted this blue buff. They really wanted the solo laner to die. Yokin going to be the first one up, uh, thrown through that world duration seal. Going to get revived here, but it's a short-lived revive. A circus that puts an end to him. Preds dives in, but he most of his health in damage straight away. Brots dashing in aggressively. Bevy Monster are going to try and punish him for it. But the good Meteor over the wall forces Preds back out. Zysolis gets out with a slither of health as well. There's not enough range poke on the side of Donkey who, in order to really punish him for that one. Brots went straight into the front line and then just walked himself back out. I had a little bit of help getting making his way out of there. Eyes Silence really putting in some, some work to keep him alive during that as well as Mogao. But I mean, when, when you're Brots at this stage of the game, we're only 14 minutes in. When you can dash aggressively into three players on Donkey Hoof and still walk away, it, it's starting to spell disaster here for Donkey Hoof early on. I mean, it's only a 2,000 gold lead, but th that one little action spells numbers for this mid laner. Oh, yeah. He's, he's been putting in a shift here in this game. He's been set up quite well thanks to the control coming out for this double guardian. And Sergazek as well, 2 0 2, the silent assassin so far. Not really spoken too much about this Bakasaur outside of his early game potential to steal farm away from Donkey Youth. But he's been turning up in these fights. He's been chomping down on the targets that he needs to be. And, you know, that cripple field has proven you know, more detrimental to Bevy Monster than I thought it was going to be rather than to just go to be targeted on Preds. I mean, the one thing about the Cripple Field is if you have a leap, you go right over it. There's only one person on this team who can go right over that. I mean, I guess Preds, if he can get the, the teleport around it. But only Raiden can really deal with that, that ability. Bevy just has to either walk through it as slowly as possible, dreading every single second of it, or they have to find another path through. And Serga has done so well in positioning that ultimate to cut off escape paths. And Zerga has also elected to go into a Toxic Blade as his uh, third item of choice after the Golden Blade and after the Attack Speed Boots. So he's just going to have that anti heal online. Yokin going for a ride once again. It's been the Capri, been the target every single time in this fight. And Ekrum knocks him down. The revive goes onto Gunter instead. So Zergazek is going to die in the backside for it. But Yokin is a bit too big to get the revive onto himself. Unfortunate play there for the Capri. The worst feeling in the world is a Kepri when your ult goes on the wrong person. Because you know he wasn't trying to get that ult on the right. He was trying to get that one onto himself. He wanted to make sure I live through this or I bait out more things by forcing them to use this ability. Or I just get out. Well, one thing he did manage to do was set up for the Gold Fury for Donkey Hoofus. Everyone on Smiley Face just uh, kind of forgot the objective was there and forgot what they were going up against. So Donkey Hoof get a 16-minute Gold Fury. Yeah, they went, oh, we killed Yorkin. We killed their tank. They can't do this Gold Fury. What do you mean it's down? Hello? What, what do you mean it's done already? Oh, yes, they have an Alquang, a Hu Yi, and a Olrun. Of course, they're going to be able to do it very quickly. Bit of misplay there from Smiley Face puts Donkey Hoof back into the lead in this game, but in gold, I'm not so sure in terms of experience, but um, gold is where it matters at this stage of the game. Experience comes into play just a little bit later. Experience actually is still in favor of Smiley Face by 4,500. So 
Honestly, I actually do think the Spider Face still have the lead here. You know, the gold the gold difference is going back up to their favor as well, but the experience difference is a huge, huge difference. Like more than I expected this to be a stage of the game. Yeah, and at this stage, you know, pre 20, 30 minutes experience, yes, gold is nice to have a good lead on, but experience is the biggest one just because of base values alone. Nobody's level 20 yet, and nobody's evening out really. You see a two level disparity in the dual lane for both of those players, and you see a level between the jungle, well, it was a level between the jungle, but a level in the solo lane between them. So you just see a, a little one and two level here, and that's just base values, base CC durations that are coming through for these different gods. Uh, Pyromancer going to be started up here by Smiley Face. Don't you far in the area to stop this objective going down, but looks like it was just going to be all of a Bevy Monster's dash is blocked, rooted in place, forced into that dazzling offensive. Preds around the back, they're looking for Brots. Brots going to force to use his Aegis only on Zerga. Zek is blinking to help his mid lane and help him he shall. Preds falls down as the first capture team despite outcomes the sanctified field once more, just to create some distance between Gunter and the rest of the members of Smiley Face, but the damage has already been done. Silence getting it taken out by Ren, who got a little too aggressive going into the back line so aggressively. Bevy down to a quarter health and the Scare's Blessing on top, just to make sure that Ekrom doesn't finish him off too fast. Ekrom not able to get the final bit of damage off, so Bevy will live and they trade out one for one, barely. One for one as Mogao is able to get out with about 90 health to his name after another great ricochet by Raiden. And for another one on the Seer, guys, he throws the mark for the Golden Crow. But another objective goes to Donkey Hoof. Yeah, I think uh, Mogao would have still had his passive up, so he would have lived. Uh, but, well, I say he would have lived. Would have just been put into a nice little bit of a sleep nap. It was up to Donkey Hoof whether we were able to take that, uh, take that passive away from him afterwards, but just living on the slither of health. Close call there for Smiley Face and Donkey Hoof putting themselves again back into a position where they can snag the lead away from Smiley Face and they look for just yet another objective, yet another fight. They're keeping this game close, they're keeping this game in, gra in their grasp and they're also keeping E-Chrome away from this purple buff. Yeah, and right back to the tier 2 tower after an airstrike forced out of the Hunter. An insane amount of damage online already for Prez. He's only got three full items online working on that second ring. Imagine it'll be the Telkines. He's got that demonic online, but I mean, at this stage of the game, Alquang is well within one shot potential with the full rotation of his kit on either of these carries. Don't forget, he was five levels down on Ekrom when he made that gank attempt and almost killed him before Ekrom got his uh, uh, get the chance to turn around and you know, fight him or even get his airstrike off. That's how quickly Alquang can do stuff from behind. Imagine if he's the five levels ahead. He just insta kills anybody he just looks at. Or even just an even level. I mean, if they're both level 19 or even both level 17 at that point, that is likely a dead E-Chrome at that point. Luckily for him, those extra levels keeping him alive onto it for those extra protection, extra health or anything else. But so much was invested in that last fight onto Brots. It took them so long to take this Agni down. And a beautiful CC chain that came out of not not just Brots with the stun at the very back end of it, but Ice Silence and Syrga making sure to keep Preds off them as long as he, they could. Yeah, I mean, Preds, he thought he had the uh, kill all on lock, but the second the Aegis came out, just enough time was bought for the rest of the members of Smiley Face to turn around and take down this Alquang. Just that extra bit of anti-healing, you know, it, it was detrimental to Preds on this Alquang. The demonic grip and the application of the Toxic Blade for the Bakasura ultimate meant that it was it was curtains for this uh, for this Alquang. That's a lot of health on Yakin. That is a lot of health. And it's only potential to go even further, not just with his base one from hitting 13 to level 20, but with the amount of items he can still pick up to give him even more health. I mean, uh, normally this is the time I would say get a kin size on, but you're already this deep into crit. You're not swapping over for a kin size. No, and you're not building kin size on a Jing Wei because otherwise you're gonna go. Why did I pick Jing Wei? I I want I want a refund. Can I can I please swap this person out for somebody else? Can I select on the wheel instead? You know, I am playing Morrigan. Yeah, I can select on the wheel for somebody else. Could you imagine being able to have a mid-game god trade? Just like, all right, guys, we hit the 20-minute mark. Anybody want to swap their gods? We only got one of the... Oh, okay, you change your hunters. All right, boom. No more Jingwei. Now you have a Cernanos. I don't know. Throw that one into the mix. Man, that'd be something to bring into it. But for the time being, it is a full commit into the crit out of E-Chrome. And with all the health built up by Yakin, it's going to take a lot to take down this bug. Yeah, the, uh, the amount of health that he has is quite strong. But the amount of protections he has is... 
Not so much. He, he's still going to be quite squishy, I would say, to the members of Smiley Face. They get into a nice lockdown chain like they've done before with Ice on it's repeatedly using the World of Rage and Steel onto this bug. Then it, it could spell Kern for him. Yoth is going to have his dash blocked there by the blink from Mogao. You can see the health just, just it melted away there thanks to the damage coming out from the members of Smiley Face. In it goes. Island Silence once more. Looking for that World of Rage and Steel. Picks up nobody but a few minions. Looks to try to turn it onto their support. Great stun coming out of the back, but Ice Silence is going to get eaten by friends. Preds up in the sky, but Ekron man's find one, and Yaakin grabs Surga with the Rising Dawn on the backside of it. Preds with no mana and barely any health is trying to run away from Mogao and Preds, or Mogao and Brods. But with the epic uppercut out of Mogao and one final shot on the bottom, and Brods able to help bring them down. Bevy and Raiden both get stunned out by this Agni, the bomb a little bit early out of Brods and Raiden. Now on the way onto the back inside, e Chrome picks him up with one more basic after the camp dies. And a quick 3-2 trade out for Smiley Face. And they're going to look to get some objective pressure as well. Tier 2 tower going to be the call for e Chrome. The rest of the members of Smiley Face just push up that mid lane oh so slightly. And once again, looking for Brots, can't find Brots. And Brots is able to turn around and win the fight here for Smiley Face. But it's all off the back of Mogao. Great peel, great engage as well at the very beginning. Just to block the dash coming out from the Capri. And, you know, Mo Mogao controls the fight from there on in. He has some good mezzes out. He manages to get the epic uppercut onto the correct target as well on Prince's Alquong. Just to help peel some more. This, this you know, double-pronged attack from these two Guardians. It's just a bit of a game changer here for Smiley Face. One thing I noticed by looking in onto that replay is Brot's got a three-man stun through the Sanctified Fields. When you have that ultimate, that is your get-out-of-jail-free card. That is your, hey guys, they're all slow. Everything they throw at us is much slower. Let's all get back to safety. But Brot's managed to find three people with the Noxious Doom stuns amidst that ultimate, walking into it and still casting in. Uh, well, Yakin just gets butchered by Syriga. Mogao and I silence making sure to keep them CC chain and locked down. So that way the jungle can take it down. The Pyromancer falls, but this time in the favor of Smiley Face as they extend their lead now to nearly 5,000, about 4,500 in their favor so far. Also, they're going to be starting up the Fire Giant as well. Chrome going to be the one to tank to begin with. Sergazek is in there as well. Looks just trying to do as much damage as they can. Take that down to a quarter health. Before they look to give it up, Bevy Monster using that dazzling offensive Preds on the backside, and that's who they're really worried about. Get stunned out, left on, and taken out. e credited with that kill to put number 13 on the board. The Baker's dozen for Smiley Face as they look to go for nicely cooked Fire Giant. 24 minutes into the game. And once again, the power of Anti-Heal comes in strong for it as a Toxic Blade and a Divine Ruin make it to where Preds got basically no health back despite dropping every single shot of the dragon call onto Siriga. And when you don't get that sustained back as Kwong, you're just a sitting duck at that point. Fire Giant goes down. Smiley Face gets the first one of the game and moving all the way onto the tier two tower solo side. Only two towers left on the map for Smiley Face to drop that, drop down and make that only one remaining as tier two falls very quickly. Yeah, but it's going to be very difficult for them to push into the base and, you know, take down these Phoenixes. Donkey Cube's Phoenix defense is unbelievably strong with this composition. You have Dazzling Offensive, you have that Sanctified Field, potential wraparound from Preds once again. But the big changer from last game is instead of having that Jingwei airstrike as a safety mechanism, they have the Sunbreaker ultimate coming out from Raiden. Closes off a huge area for Smiley Face, delays them for four to five seconds from going into the objective, and could just give a moment respite for Donkey to regroup and reposition. We see a spirit robe now online for Jokin, so he's trying to get for a little bit of protections, but uh, is that little bit of protection going to be enough for him? We already saw what happened when Syriga got his hands on him. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's not the best look if they uh, they would have given that one up again. Looking to push up the tier two tower. Last one standing on the map. Smiley face between them and the Phoenixes. With three. Oh, it's all they really need. It's all over onto the left hand side. Ekron pushes up that lane as they can start working towards the first Phoenix of the game. Last tower down. Donkey Hoof have no further forms of defense between them and the birds. Ekron and Silence moved over to this left hand side. And they're only going to be met with Raiden and Yakin as the rest of the team from Smiley Face push towards the mid. But nobody's really dealing with the damage out of Ekron as he puts that bird down to under a quarter. Yakin. He's gonna get hit by that persistent gust before he can even get the dash through. Preds gonna put down a half up for the bombs out of Prox. 
Sons will leap away from the dancing offensive to the back goes spreads. He's got the revive onto the backside, so he makes the aggressive play, but doesn't get anything off of it. And with the Sunbreakers down, only Preds and Gunner's ultimate left standing. Meanwhile, Broad still has some bombs. Ekrom and Moga have their ults Ooh. as well. And Yakin barely has a health bar to even defend against it. Ryan loses about a quarter of his from one bump. Gunner drops the Sanctified Field. The back of forces everyone to walk away. And Moga gets dropped down into the sleeping time. Pass him. And he won't be able to get through that one as Gunner manages to find the last shot around the corner. Left side bird down. And a one-for-one -one trade as they lose both solo laners. Uh, so Zek and Ekron were just trying to get in front of those base cracks to allow their solo laner to get back up. Just they, they got in the way of each other in the end, and that's what allowed Gunter to get that last base attack around the corner. Preds trying to do a wraparound here for this mid Phoenix defense, but without any of the ultimates available to them, I don't know if they're going to be able to hold on to this one for much longer. But it does look like Spider Face are giving up the chase here. They are going to give up on this objective for now. Reset the jungle, heal back up thanks to that fire chant, and then look for it once more. It's Eye Silence who's going to be on uh, Preds watch here. Yeah, I'm going to get a nice two-man root from range on that Capri, and Preds is still waiting in the wings to see if he can find his way into this fight, but He's surrounded there's by a wards. ward everywhere he goes. Not going to be spotted out by this one, so he might be able to make something out of nothing else with this. Immediately goes into the back of Big Dragon Call, but unfortunately, he's staring down the barrel of the gun. It fired back and sent him to the fountain. Serga getting credit for the kill, putting him up to five and two on the Bakasura. Everybody heading towards the right side as the mid Phoenix is gone and only one left standing between Smiley Face and the Titan. Bevy at full health. Everybody else saw Dogu for full health. Bevy gonna get CC up into the sky. Mogal throws one. The Phoenix is down, and that's a quick retreat out of Smiley Face. Uh, I thought they were, weren't even gonna get any Phoenix thanks to the defensive prowess of Donkey's draft, but. They proved me wrong, and in one fire giant, they not only take every single tower, they take every single phoenix, blow the doors wide off. Donkey Hoof's, uh, Donkey Hoof's basically going to have to get a copter in to just, you know, put the doors back on. And I don't think Spider-Face are going to allow them to even get a quote in at this rate. 30 minutes could be the time of, of any end game here. Well, Primal Fury quickly started up by e Chrome, but with the amount of crit and attack speed he's got built up, he'll take that one down very quickly, right? I, I, okay, I thought Rain was maybe going to take a peek over there, see if he can get a cheeky ricochet, but instead he'll play the smart path and just go to his purple buff instead, clearing that one up. With all three Phoenixes down, this is a really tough fight for Donkey Hoof to fight back into. Yeah, just the the early game didn't go as according to plan, just picked off consistently was Yokin. Thanks to the fact he was the Kepri. You see, he's even forced into the beach just to give himself a bit more safety. He had, he had the shell in the early game, forced him to beat at level 12. Just because he was getting picked on so much, just one less team-wide relic. It's a very defensive relic for himself. It just means that Donkey Hoof don't have the answers to this double guardian strategy. And because it's the double guardian with how much CC both of these guardians apply, it just allows the carries to put out so much free damage. Silence going to get caught, but luckily a beautiful three-man stun out of Brots will get his support. Back to safety. He's losing half of his health in that one little skirmish. Now they're going to turn their attention back over towards the fire giant, or at least just walk away from it. It's going to turn into a hand fire giant right away. And out come the suns from Raiden. It's going to be a Hail Mary play here from the side of Donkey. If they look to say this objective or nothing, they do get the objective. Can they get out? Yok is the first to fall. Zergazek blinks into the backside. Brots picks up Fred. Zergazek does fall down to Raiden in the end. But giving a chase is Ikra. I'm going to say it's uh, not coming up too handy for them. As Bevy going to get rooted in place. And e will get the finishing shot. That's three down for the Hunter. As e continues to push in. I'm not sure that Fire Giant was worth it, Donkey Hoof. You got only two people left to defend against four out of Smiley Face. It is your two carries, but neither ults are available for them. And Gunner's life is not available for him as well. Right and sitting in the fountain. But he's going to get yanked right back outside of it. And e will finish that one out. I'm pretty sure all five of those kills went to e during that fight. But most importantly, the Titan falls down for Smiley Face to even it out as a 1-1 one, one set. So first game, it looked like Smiley Face should have had it, but they lose it on a fire chain. Uh, second game, um, it looks like Smiley Face should have it. They then lose a fire giant, but then win the fight. So um, don't get the fire giant. That's your final objective. Or do. Who knows? 
at this point, I mean, it, it's so back and forth between these two teams. You can see that uh, coming up from the SOC for both these teams, they still hold that relatively even match. And you can see why there's still that power struggle for the first seed in SOC. But coming up into SCC, it's a lot of the same story for these two teams specifically. They're still battling like they were in their previous league. But uh, the big thing that we saw from this matchup here is that Smiley Face still are struggling with the Earth. That Smiley Face, while they were struggling in different portions of game one, they were managed to polish that off here in game number two. And were able to close this game out a little bit cleaner than Donkey Hoof were. I mean, Smiley Face just identified the issues that they had in game one, uh, not just with their draft, but with their play style, and went, right, we're going to fix this up by doing this. We're going to take, uh, you know, Jing Wei instead of the Frey, give ourselves a bit more pressure in that early game in the uh, ADC position. We're going to take a much more aggressive, much more instanced um, support rather than needing, you know, the wind-up time, which just, you know, instantly gets that engage off. And best of all, we're going to have Kumbakana in the solo lane instead of the... Uh, instead of the Cerberus, just because it provides that much more pressure in the team fights in the late game. And it worked a treat for them. The game plan went off without a hitch. It kind of felt like Donkey Who's draft went back a little to the reminiscence of week number one, where it kind of Frankenstein some picks in. Didn't really have a lot of follow-up, in my opinion, for the Kepri Amaterasu. I mean, they had an Ola run and a Ho Yi with some, but I felt that they were still kind of lacking a little bit in the draft, but most importantly, still their execution they're still sh having a hard time bringing it all together. Strong game two at a smiley face, so they were able to bring it back and close out game three. And the set for them are Donkey Hoof going to have a run back and able to bring themselves their first victory of the split. Stick around, we'll be back in just a few minutes. And welcome back to the European Challenger circuit here. Game number three of this set between Smiley Face and Donkey Hoof. The former SOC teams now moved up here into the Challenger circuit. And still having their same old scuffles going into game number three. Do you expect any differences in the drafts this time around, AJ? Maybe we're going to see Donkey Hoof go away from the Oleron and the uh, and the Alquang. It worked out well in game one, well-ish, uh, but it, it it just got off to zero starts into that into that second game. I mean, the change in draft from Smiley Face completely neutered the mid jungle combo from Donkey Hoof, and I'm expecting if. Smiley Face go into something similar. Donkey Hoof need to react and go into something different themselves. Yeah, it feels like they're trying to kind of start the drafts themselves when in reality, I think they need to be a little bit more reactionary to it. It's, okay, they pick this, so let's not grab our jungler immediately because there's so many potential counter picks for it or even our Ola run so early that something can be drafted up against it. Yeah, Oleron does have his counters. He is a really strong god, but like I said, he does have his counters. I mean, one of the biggest ones when he first came out was having for mana in the solo lane or in the jungle mm -hmm. because he just ran through that sanctified field, didn't care about the sanctified field, and just killed the Oleron for it. So, you know, maybe we could see something different in the fact that they may have taken the first pick and it looks like they have done. So already a different start here for Donkey from the order side. And this could very well shake up how the drafts go. It won't shake up where, whether or not Morgan gets banned because neither of these two teams are wanting to leave this goddess up onto the table. It's also been the first pick team that's been banning her in all three of these games, surprisingly. Yeah, I, th I think that's just because a lot of teams don't want to really first pick the Morrigan, but they don't want to face it themselves because they know it's a good second pick, you know, material. You know, you pick it on your second slot alongside something else just because Morgan can struggle a bit in that she can get killed in lane quite quickly. Um, it does take a while to get online with that ultimate having such a long cooldown in the early game. But it looks like Don Cuf, they don't want uh, to even give themselves the option of the older run as they take it away from themselves and also from Smiley Face. Uh, it looks like they're trying to set themselves up to have one of the big magic carries. You take Ola run off, pretty much the next go-to has been this Freya, so Don Kuf might be setting themselves up for it. But Smiley Face aren't going to allow Cthulhu through. There's no question in their mind. They said no Cthulhu, and Don Kuf are going to take away the Kuma Karn this time around. Yep, I did not see that one coming whatsoever. Kuma Karn, uh, who knew that he would be such an annoying cod? That you'd have to bat it away. Um, that was that was sarcasm, by the way. I don't know if that came through. Um, you know, I I kind of expected Kumbakana to be a second round ban, not a first round ban. Donkey's gonna look to take away the Subek away from Smiley Face by having us that first pick instead. So still no no Subek for the Smiley Face team. 
Okay, but that's your Moja left open and picked up by Smiley Face. That's a, a Freya or a Jing Wei that Smiley Face can pick up as well. And there's the Jing Wei. And now the option goes back to Don Kahoof. They've got a lot, of op a lot of options for themselves. I mean, we saw the Merlin has been prevalent amongst the picks. We've also seen as well the Freya. And it was shown off into game number one. So, I mean, there's still some stuff on the table. But when you give away your Moja Jing Wei over to Smiley Face, I'm kind of just scratching my head here, Don Kahoof. And then Donkey Hoof also would like to take away one of Sobek's strongest uh, thoughts in Picks and Bands, which is leaving him as that flex pick potential by taking this Horus up early. Mm -hmm. Means you know Sobek's going to go into that solo lane. You know Horus is going to be your support. Merlin in that mid lane, taking it away from Brost. Yeah. I like that idea. It still has access to his Vulcan, but I'm not too sure if he's going to be picking the Vulcan up into the Sobek, into the Horus. Uh, no. does have you motion <laughs> to just slight, to keep people in for that Earthbreaker ultimate. But then again, I don't. It is going to be the back of Sora, so Tonkyu will probably like to ban out the uh, ban out the Vulcan, even though it probably wouldn't have been picked up by Spider Face anyway. Yeah, if I'm playing Vulcan, these two first pick tanky gods are not the ones that I would want to go against as a Vulcan. He has very low mobility. As if you don't know, backfire is okay, but it's definitely not a mobility tool, and then you have. The meatball for a little bit of CC. Outside of that, you are a sitting duck against these two gods. No CC immunity, no way to really peel yourself against them. It's a field day for those two. I would leave it open if I were them. Just bait yeah, them I'd, into picking it. I'd, I'd actually maybe go into a Raijin ban if I was Donkey Hoofy. I just take away one of the leaps that allows a bit more safety against these Sobekonoris. Maybe you could even see Yanis ban. No, Yanis has been uh, you know something that's not really been touched here by our SOC and SCC teams, but He's still quite a prevalent god, quite strong, I'd say, with the major builds available right now. But they have elected to take away the Falcon, the Jormungandr, taken up by Smiley Face. Finally, we get to see the big snake today. Yeah, I was kind of wondering after not seeing him ban how long it would take Smiley Face to snap Ooh. pick it. And it was very quickly, and another very quick snap pick for Donkey Hoof. Hubwa going to be locked in, and a Ho Yi to round it out for Donkey Hoof. Option goes back to Smiley Face. They're looking for their mid laner. What are they going to give Brats? Um, might actually end up being that Raijin. Could even be a Poseidon here, just to reduce some of the things. Discordia is going to be the choice here. Bit of safety thanks to the dash. Um, might be able to get away from the Hebo just a bit more thanks to that root. It, it has its ups and downs. I, I can see it being a good pick. I can see it being not so great. I think the passive is going to play a key part on whether Smiley Face's mid-choice here has the success that they wanted to or not. Goes on to the Yormaganda for the early game portion of the laning phase, but has to at some point transition to this back of Sora. Oh, we're going to see Raiden back on the Ho Yi after a strong performance in it last game. They come up a little bit shy in their victory, but Raiden's still putting out exceptional plays with it. Some great triple bounces that we saw from him. But they're going up against the Yamoja in lane, and Yamoja alone is enough to uh, dispel some major pressure, even if it's coupled with the Jing Wei. Yeah, this is uh, one of the lanes that I really never want to face in my entire my career. Uh, just because the lockdown followed by a knockup from the Jingwei, followed by another bit of lockdown, followed by yet another lockdown. It you, you are just dead in that CC chain every single day of the week. You have to hope that you somehow get ahead of it. Yoko with the blink. Interesting play. Means he gets the spirit minion by himself, so he'll hit level 2 from this wave player. Yeah, but he's also just given up his initiation or his disengage tool as well. So a very risky play by him. They're not even going to be able to get that full wave cleared out yet. So, I mean, it could be seeing level two here in the, in Smiley Face before they even hit their level two. And the whole point is that he's now just going to run at Ekrom, try and force him away. Listen, does looks like he hits level two right away. So just going to go for Ekrom, gets his stun off, but it's going to get stunned back in kind. I just, it's, he's taken a lot of damage for it. it. It's not really worked out here for the boys on Donkey Hoof. I'm surprised Ekrom threw that persistent gust at the minions and not directly at Silence, but a quick dash in. He's going to force Silence to back off just a little further. As he played very aggressively, got punished immediately for it. They knew he had level two, he's going to dash on. Instant stun coming out of Eyes Silence to make sure that there was no further engage from him. Yeah, Ekrom does have his beats forced out, uh, though, so this could look to be an early rotation here from Preds, and it is indeed. And we are going to get to step on a ward right down the Alpha Harpy, so we're going to walk away from this gank. It's actually going to start backing 
don't know if that's going to get caught out by the ward, but this should prove to be a bit more safety here for Smiley Face than they were initially expecting in this early game. Those Alpha Harpy wards by Smiley Face have been their saving graces in these early engagements. It stopped Preds from making two or three rotations every single game. Yeah, which makes you think that if, if it happens in game one, okay, that's fine. Happens in game two and you do it again. Okay, we definitely know they have it here. Let, let's not do that rotation once more. Okay, we're doing the rotation again. Okay, that's... It, it, some, something needs to change in between the games on your rotation pass if you're trying to get pressure onto the dual lane and you don't get it because they see your ganks every single time. I mean, it, it becomes calculated at that point. It, it, it's just... Does he, does he do it at level 3 or at level 4? Well, let's just make sure that when we hit level 2, 3, we throw a ward where we know he's walked every single time. These very just telegraphed ganks on the side of Preds because he's made the same pathing to every single one of them. Yeah, so I, I would have gone around the top of the goal for you, trying to just go around the very, very top of them, wrap around them as basically you're part of the minion wave. Hang on, why do we have seven minions? Oh, it's an Alquan. That's what's happened. Uh, Jochen, again, just taking a bit of poke, but he's, he's fine with that. That passive is going to heal him up just a slight bit as well. And th this is not what you expect when you take up the uh, take up the Horus. You expect to be some of the early game aggressors in the lane, but you can't when you're against the Emotion. It, it just doesn't work that way. And not just that, in all honesty, when you blink to get the Spirit Minion at level 1, you're not going to be able to get that level of pressure when you don't have that means of getting in and then getting out. Well, looks like Baxter has managed to finish up his Golden Blade. Runs a not too healthy mid lane, but he's not too worried about any potential gank, any potential kill here. Because it's not it's not something like a Mercury that can just go in from yonder away. It's not the Alquang that he's been playing against before, just has an invisibility. He knows where Circus X is going to be every single time. And he's got Preds around. Preds playing something different for once, playing up onto the Hebo instead. So bit of a different look here still some magical damage coming out from the jungle but instead of going for a base attack based build looking for that big 2000 damage oh yeah i like... might not begin out of this one quick blink ult out of siraga and the follow-up stun by silence to make sure that there is nowhere to go for the support of donk Oof. and first blood will go around the waist of smiley face siraga making an invade here realizes he's running to a hub wall however preds is level five but not gonna opt to use that ultimate recognizing siraga still has that leap to get out yeah, I think if he uses the ultimate, Circus Egg goes down to about a third health and then still gets out. Raiden force a dash away. But Smiley Face, once again, find themselves up one kill in the early game. Find themselves with a 2,000 gold lead thereabouts. 1,000 experience in the lead as well. And that four and a half, you've pushed up to five minutes. It's not the best start here for Donkey Cube in game three. Yeah, Kind of reminiscing back to their older struggles, though. It is only one death so far compared to what we saw against the Poppies last week, where Poppies just started from minute one, and then it just went downhill from there. Preds on the Havwa definitely going to be looking more towards the mid-late game where he hits his uh, four ults, and then you just die to... Well, you take your pick which of the four ults you want to die to. Um, I want to die to Atlas of the Other River, because then I'll be the first person to die to it. The wet paper? Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you recognize this as the wet paper. Yeah, but I've got to give this official name. You know, I'm, I'm I'm a caster. I have to try and remember every single ability name, even though I know I'll fail at that miserably. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, there was the argument on Twitter whether to call it the wet paper or the wet carpet, but it's definitely a scroll, therefore paper. I remember it's just, I remember it was called it the wet toilet paper for some reason. Uh, why would you call it the wet toilet paper? That's just weird. I know. I I thought that was extremely weird. I, I thought wet paper sounded better, but I don't I don't know. Rebuff gonna go down here, and Gunter's gonna be recipient of it. No invades coming out so far. Jochen caught between a rock and a hard place. Manages to blink away two ultimates, in fact three ultimates forced there from Smiley Face. Wow. Jochen gets out scot free. Close call there for the support. Yeah, almost almost in a bit of a predicament there, but luckily luckily for him, nobody actually hit him with anything. They just kind of. Set up a bunch of body blocking with it and said, ah, this will be enough. Oh, wait, he's got blink. Yeah, I think the whole idea was he doesn't really have a dash if no one's around. So let's just corner him by himself, throw out our ultimates, throw out the cripple field so we can't dash anyway. And he, he's a goner. Oh, wait, he managed to blink out of everything. And that's probably one of the reasons why they have this Discordia pick as well. Don't forget that golden apple of Discord, if it does connect with somebody, will cripple them. I mean, they can't leap away. 
unfortunately a little late on the trigger to pull that one and lock him in place. So Yakin does manage to make it out. Like I said, with three ultimates burned, but they're not too worried about that one as they can just wait until they all come back off the cooldown and run it right back. So over onto the left-hand side, Raiden going to clear out his own purple. And once again, no boots. Go straight for the uh, straight for the Devourer's Gauntlets, wanting to just stay in lane, stay by himself as much as possible. And it hasn't worked out so far. Game one worked out a treat. Game two, Ekrom onto the Jingwei, actually to get himself ahead and put right on a bit of pressure. And in game three, it looks like it might be a bit more of the same as he finds himself a half level down to this Jingwei. Well, it is a Jingwei. She doesn't necessarily need her boots. How much safety and mobility she has built into her kit, but with both of them on the Devourer's Gauntlets and stacking them up, Ekron with a bit of an advantage, about 16 stacks ahead of his opposition. Right back to the red buff. Gunner and Yakin will go to make sure that they can secure that one when it comes off of cooldown. And Gunner will get the back harpies for a little bit of extra experience to boot. Get it? Uh, going for those uh, backs as a mid laner, something which. A lot of mid laners don't really do, but it's one of the big things that could separate you getting level 20 in 20 minutes, level 20 in 30 minutes. Ready to get pulled back by a beautiful ripped up by Ice on his force into the sky. Stun over the wall, not going to connect. Rotation comes out from Jokin to make sure everything's A-OK -okay for his ADC. But Jokin, still level 6, needs to try and get some farm somewhere as Ice on has opened up a 2 level lead. And yeah, that's one thing I've noticed about Jokin is he's really been struggling in farm, even in the games where they're somewhat ahead he's always been a couple of levels down compared to i silence it feels like he just doesn't know where he needs to be when the farm is up he's like he's the first one to jump in when the fighting starts but when it comes to the farming he's just kind of scattered he's he's trying to let the rest of his team get some farm themselves and get themselves ahead but by doing that he's sacrificing too much he's just putting himself in a in an awkward spot and when he starts to get to the point where he's stacking up the uh we're stacking up his gun, his blessing, or he's going to be stacking up uh, the Gaunt of Thebes. He needs to be sticking around these farm points as much as possible. Uh, Ice Island's making sure that, you know, Raiden's stuck underneath this tower, looking to maybe dive here on his left hand side, but look who is around. It's Preds. That's done, going to be a little bit off the mark in the bubble. Can do a little bit of damage, but Preds with a blink, and he's going to throw the water hands on the one, drops down the carpet, get a little bit of mobility for himself, and the River's Rebuke. Out of Ice Silence, we'll make sure that he can get through. Stun onto Ice Silence, and the damage from Raiden with a beautiful ricochet. We'll make sure to get the kill onto the enemy's support, making me a one for one for zero trade so far for Donkey Hoop. Oh, but the fight's not over yet. Sergazek and Brotz are making their rotations felt. Well, Sergazek with the blinking Raiden. Looks to be the target here. Could be Jokin as well, but both of them get out. Preds with the good peel thanks to that knockup. The nerf to Bakasura quite recently coming out dividends there for Donkey Hoof as the CC immunity lasts a bit shorter of a time. I was going to have to go into a quick pause, unfortunately. But, uh, God, just about get out there, didn't they, Donkey Hoof? Yeah, they almost managed to get out to that one and barely scraped through with it. A beautiful knockup right as the CC immunity ended on Siraga. And that was the only reason that they were able to get out is because they had that perfect timing there out of Fred's on the Habwa. Yeah, I think if it was just a second later, it would have been there's a second or third basic attack from the Butcher Blades um, regurgitate long range basic attack combo. And the, both of them were dead. Double kill for Sergazek and the rest of the team running away as the Gold Fury gets consumed by the members of Smiley Face. They could, in, they could still potentially go for the Gold Fury once we get back into game because of the fact that, you know, everyone did have to back, but. They're, they're thinking better of it without anybody there to really tank it up because I Silence was still returning back from his earlier death. They, they, they just didn't have the DPS to take it down. Instead, they'll all just back away from the fight. Zirga almost managing to pick up a couple of them through it, but as we said, Preds with a perfectly timed water spout right out of the CC immunity from the ultimate on Zirga is able to keep his team alive and force Smiley Face back after kind of an awkward engage by them in that last little fight in duo. Well, it's been a good game so far again from Preds being able to keep up in farm against the Bakasura. Bakasura notoriously extremely difficult to keep up in farm against. Mercury's been one of the best to do it just because of how quickly he can rotate around the jungle as well. But so, so far he's keeping toe to toe with this Bakasura only really separated by that kill that he got for first blood. Oh, which isn't the easiest thing to do as a Habwa, you know. A very high mana cost just to run through the jungle. You're not going to be nearly as efficient as taking down the camps as being able to well, literally eat one of the camps whenever you just walk by it, but 
So far, Pred's been holding his own in this matchup. Yeah, and uh, Donkey have been holding themselves you know, to a good standard in this game three so far. Rot, King Aggression wanted a mid lane as uh, his support was aggressed on here. But whilst they have looked the part here, they are still down 2.5k over the head of Smiley Face. Maybe just closer down to that 3k mark as Lamogal proxy farming as best as he can. Four out is our ultimate early from Bevy Monster, and he's just gonna run away. It, it, the solo lane is something we haven't really touched upon, and I don't think most people will touch upon it because it is a Sobek versus a Yomanganda. Not too much is gonna happen there, and then the Mogao has gone in for a full damage build because yeah. he's Mogao. Yeah, no, I, I was gonna say I am gonna touch upon it because he did go for a Chronos Pendant instead of your typical defense second slot, and he might be punished for it. Bevy gonna get the kill under the tower. Might be turned back on here by Surga, the ultimate doing some decent damage, but Preds with a quick rotation over will make sure that Bevy gets to live. So first kill in the solo lane goes the way of Bevy in the 1v1. Yeah, and it was an actual solo kill as well. No assists came out there from Smiley Face because nobody did assist with that kill. So 100% got soloed, did the Mogao, and he might lose his tower for it. One of the big benefits of having Sobek as a matchup into the Yomangander is that you will always proc his days passive with that, you know, that kick flip, thanks to that charge spray, or with the tail whip will also just, you know, immediately do more damage to him. So two out of your four abilities will cause him to take more damage. And with that extra little bit of defense, Bevy just didn't care about anything that Mogao could throw. Meanwhile, Mogao didn't have the defense. He went for this full power, full offensive Yormangunder build to start out, and you can see how he got punished for it. Yeah, the, he doesn't have defense online, and he gets killed because he doesn't have defense online. Who would who would have thought? You know, when he gets defense online now, he's going to be harder to kill. Who who would have thought? But Bevy Monster going up into a item that we've seen a bit of a resurgence of quite recently. Um, the anti crit item uh, going up there. Spectral armor. It's um, it's good. It's really good, especially if you go up against a god that likes to crit. I was going to say, it feels a little early to go into it, but then I remember there's a Jing Wei on the other side, and it's never too early to negate crit from a Jing Wei. So, very early pickup on it. Normally, we don't see this till what, like, fourth, maybe fifth out of the solo lane, but yeah. recognizing what he's going against, he says, yeah, we're just going to stop that early. Yeah, and you do see the very occasional rare Bakasura build where it can go into maybe a crit, maybe one crit item like a Rage, just to increase your basic attack damage a bit more, you know, get that burst going. But Gold Fury can get bursted down quite easily by Smiley Face. No contest there from Don Q as they open up more of a lead, putting it just past that 3,000 mark and exceeding experience difference graph. Just starting to level out a bit more. Don Q putting themselves into more aggressive positions, more aggressive standpoints, and it's stagnated Don Smiley Face's stranglehold of this game. Yakin unable to really get in into that last little skirmish by the Gold Fury, so he's unable to steal that one away. And again, it comes down to a lot of his level disparity. He's still two, two and a half levels down to silence. He's really suffering on this farm. You can see he's got his Gauntlet of Thebes, but he is 39 stacks behind I Silence. He's had his finish for a while, so he's probably even further behind. Yeah, I think if you went to the whole grand scheme of stacks and how many minions he's been near, Yorkin's probably a good 100 minions down. Well, maybe not that many, but he is a feral whack down. ADC's looking to just try and poke each other down a bit more. Nothing too much coming of it, but Zergasek is in this uh, left-hand side jungle if they wanted to make a play onto Donkey's Raiden. But both ADC's going for the exact same build as they did last game with the Varus Gauntlet's attack speed boots going up into uh, the Atalanta's bow. Next up's going to be an item of crit, and this is where both of them could differ. Different options available to him depending on what they want to go with first. Raining Chrome will continue to go through, and you see it's the short blade picked up on the side of E Chrome. So going in to get that early rage stacked up. Bevy gonna miss the pluck, and Pred's gonna miss the water cannon onto Mogao. He was still hiding in the depths as long as he could. Dash away from Bevy so he doesn't get hit by the tremble out of the Mogao from the bellowing roar. Blinking from Siraga is gonna get the ultimate out of Bevy immediately. Damage from the mid laner is good, but Frost is now pushed back away, forces Preds out, who has to drop down the wet paper in order to walk away as fast as he can, but he's being chased down by Siriga. Takes a nice little 300 shot to the face from the Hobwad. Not sure he's going to want to continue in further beyond there. 
No, so decent trade out there. I think Donkey have come out a bit worse for wear, given they have to use a bit more ultimate. Sergazek forced to use his uh, leap away after he got blinked on. Sergazek going to take a lot more damage though from Preds. Meanwhile, whilst that all went down, ADC had a bit more of a skirmish themselves. Raider coming out worse in that trade, forced to go back to base, forced to use that as ultimate. Neither but uh, Ikra forced to use both his relics in turn. That's looks like tier 1 did fall, tier 2 under a bit of pressure, as is the blue buff. Looks like Yuta's ultimate once again, just to try and force off these invaders. Yonkin could be the first one to fall here, Fred's is instead. Yonkin on the backside gonna fall down any second now. There it is, so exact with the cleanup. Yeah, I guess the one benefit of this damage build on to Mogal's Gunder is that you hit really hard against mages that don't have defense online, so Fred's takes a very nice and dangerous blow of a bellowing roar straight to his backside and he will fall down two kills for smiley face smogao extends his slash line to now one one after taking a very early spill in the solo lane well, 17 minutes into the game and yokin hasn't finished up his third i've only just built the tier two of that item thanks to the fact he's only just been back at base it, it, it's a it looks like it's gonna be quite an expensive build here as he's most likely gonna go in for a uh Spirit rope or gonna go in for the mantle of discord oh man you can just uh replay is just w and left click w left click hold 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 w and left click oh hey there's a minion give me a little bit more speed w left click i mean that's that's just what bakasur is at this stage of the game it just runs down anybody who's left standing on that backside left alone and unfortunately for yakin that was him three levels down still Eye silence. He really is having trouble farming. I mean, he's, he's still only at 28 stacks. He got let of thieves nearly 18 minutes in the game. Yeah, and he's uh, just trying to get involved here. Raiden going to be uh, getting out thanks to the little bit of a uh, move from those uh, riptides getting him out of the uh, out, 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 out of the river's rebuke from Eye silence. But they do lose some purple buff for it. Don't you losing more jungle, losing more ground in this game as leader was up to about 5k. So Gazek looking to try and get uh, some ganks going on in the mid lane. Leaps through to that Riptide. See the experience difference also creeping up to Jeshkai 6000. Bevy Monster and the Mogao making their presence known in the mid lane. As the Oni Fury is about to respawn, this will be where the next fight takes place. With the Oni Fury as well as the Pyromancer on the right hand side. Two objectives that are up for grabs for these two teams. But I think that Oni Fury is going to be much more worthwhile for this donkey hoop or the smiley face team depending on which one is able to get it six thousand or five thousand gold in favor of smiley faces they do have the gold advantage and a slight bit of level advantage mostly with the supports being the big level differentials onto it one fury has spawn and it's a 4v4 while the two junglers battle it out in mid preds chasing down Sirga. a blink in the water hands they do quite a bit of damage to Sirga. And that forces the solo laner Mogao to rotate over just to cover for him. Not quite a one shot, but it, it, it's getting closer and closer and closer for Preds. Eventually, his water hands are going to be doing about 1,000 damage. And then to be a blink knock up, blink half health coming out uh, there. And the Mogao just finds himself in the mid lane, pops up, and Preds is on a half health. Rot trying his best to get some more poke out over here onto his, uh, onto his Gold Fury pit. Team look to find a position to finally start to take down this objective. Oracle's going away smiley face, as does positional advantage. Everybody on Donkey is having to back away. Only Fury at half health. Bevy is the one who wants to get in as quick as possible, but Silence is zoning with the Riptide. Smiley face does secure the objective. The bling in from Bevy as he's hit with the golden apple. It transfers over and Preds gets dropped down by Ekrom as soon as he gets out of the title surge. Lamogao diving into the back onto the carries. Raiden and Gunner doing the best they can to run. They get slowed out by the Venom on the ground. Quick shell out of the carries will make sure that they don't die to Brot's unruly magic. But he's got a second one on the board, and Raiden will take a spell. Two kills once again for Smiley Face as they push down this mid tier one. Uh, you want to teleport in to try and defend this tier one. You're defending a tier one tower with a teleport in your entire life? That, that is not a trade that I would do whatsoever. Tier 2 tower, maybe justifiable. Phoenix, a bit more. Tier 1 tower, it's 75 gold to the entire to members of the opposition team. It's not worth that much. It's not worth your life. It's not worth the tiniest guy being taken down here by Spider Day. Yeah, now you waste your teleport, so you can't get in to try and save this objective, which you know that they're going to be at at this stage. You have a ward on that top side, but instead, 
You give your life up, you give up a tier one tower, but even more importantly, you gave up Fire Giant to Smiley Face, who already has a 10,000 gold lead. Yeah, it's um, it, it's gone from bad to worse here for Donkey Hoof. It, it was not the ideal start for them. They didn't get pressure in the lane that they really wanted to get pressure in. They've got more of an early game chunk than they did in the last game, but again, haven't been able to get off to the start that they wanted to in the jungle, thanks to you know the exact same rotation being called out for them. And once more, Gunter has been really quite silent. Only the one assist to him evolved in the in this game. Oh, never mind, Doc, you only have two kills, but no deaths at all either. And he's farming up as much as he can. They're just still behind Brotst on the. Uh, on the Discordia, and the damage numbers, they just haven't been there either, I feel. Yeah, only sitting, what is that, 40 damage above the enemy support at this stage of the game, and when you're a mid lane Merlin, uh, just a Merlin in general, you have so much potential for free poke, but you're barely sitting this much over an enemy support at 22 minutes into the game. I mean, Gunner, like you said, it's just been quiet. It's almost a non-factor in this game, only a 0 and one so far. Yeah, they did sort of feel like he was, I wouldn't say a passenger, because he, he did quite well in the previous game, but he, he almost felt like he was less impactful than he probably could have been in the previous two games on the old run. The ultimates did work, but outside of the ultimate, we don't really hear much out of it. We're not going to hear much out of this tier 2 tower in solo lane. The last one standing, and it will fall down to Smiley Face. That clears off all structures on the map. Only the birds left standing to defend against the Titan. Bevy just got to clear out the wave and try and get Yakin some farm. He's still not stacked up on this Gauntlet of Thebes. Still. It's 23 minutes into the game. This is where he has to be stacked. He doesn't finish his third item yet. This is... Not been a game to run out of the spot. He's only just finished up his third item. That is going to be the Spirit's Robe. Ideally, he would have liked to have gone into that Mantle of Discord, but I think he's just, at this point, he's had to settle for this item rather than going for the more expensive option. And it's kind of the worst situation where you have to settle for, uh, I don't want to call it the lesser of two because Spirit Robe does have its own merits, but so much more protections that you get from that Mantle of Discord, a fantastic passive to boot for how often he's been caught out in the middle of them, having that little mini stun in, in the midst of all of it. would be so great to get him out, but he's had to settle on the Spirit Robe just because he doesn't have the gold to do so. And well, he's finally within one stack of finishing up that Gauntlet of Thieves. Hopefully he will be able to finish it up it in is. this game. And then finally, Will Man stack it up. It only took him almost 24 minutes, but I, again, it's the early game. He just suffered finding any place that he wanted to farm. Yeah, and he's now suffered more so into the late game because he's now five levels down in the enemy support. Only just hit level 12, only able to get that shell available to the team right now. Nice little spin, some nice zone with those rip by D-Chrome, taking a lot more damage than he would have liked. Rogal almost pulls that next deal for now coming out there from Fed, but still gets that cleaned up house alongside Mogal. Mogal's going to use that last shot to go into the back. Everybody fairly low, but the Fire Giant sustained his healing the back up. Yakin had a quarter health, so he's forced to go back. And Brez just got caught in the middle of Broxton Mogal, and that is not a place that you want to be as a hobble. Everybody's sustaining back up thanks to the heals out of this Umoja. Into the back goes Bevy. A quick feeds out of Ecorn. We'll make sure he doesn't get thrown into the back lines. Phoenix still stands, but Bevy had a quarter health himself. Still standing here to defend. Silas will move forward to make sure to tank up the Phoenix. That way they can drop it down. Donkey Hoof unable to defend. And left side bird finally falls. Mid bird also falls to Zerga. Zek, right hand bird is the only one that's still standing here. And Smiley Face has just they've gradually grown into this set more than Donkey Hoof have. They, they, they cleaned up their mistakes from game one in that second game and looked extremely clean for it. And they found yet another gear here in this, uh, in this third game. And Thank you. They're, they're still stuck on that second gear, I think. And nobody told them that the speed limit has upped in, in these last few minutes of the game. Instead, they're still kind of just on coast at the moment. The Smiley Face, even with only seven kills. So far, nine kills have swung into this game, but Smiley Face had two Phoenixes down on the side of Donkey Hoof. And it's been the more calculated, you know, the TKOs. You saw Bevy got put to a quarter, so he can't defend the Phoenix. Jocka got put to a quarter. He can't defend the Phoenix. Instead of getting these kills, they're just forcing them back to Fountain. That way they have the opening they need to take the objectives. 
Yeah, and you know the the objectives are being quite the detriment here for Donkey. Of, at the very beginning of the set, it was Donkey of the ones who were taking objectives left, right, and center, and they were able to sneak them in game two as well. They've uh, they've taken away their objective burning capabilities. They've gone for a different draft here. It's not one that's you know worked out for them because they've they've just been undone by the money face draft. I, I like the change of direction. I like the draft they've gone for a lot more here in this game three from the game two version. And you know, it, it, it's just that it you know, hasn't worked out for them because it, it is a draft which, sh on paper, really should work. So far, again, it comes down to the execution of that draft. They drafted something that looks really good, but they just haven't been able to put it together in this game. Silence gonna get knocked up. That's gonna get the golden apple out very early out of Brock's huge ultimate, taken off the table. Ooh. But even oh. more so, the damage, the last little bit, not going to hit the bounce off of that Unruly Magic. Not going to find it, so Gunter will manage to make it out. But into the back line goes Mogal in the World Serpent. He's looking for any kind of damage he can get and zoning anyone away. Ultimate drops out of Zerga, but he has to jump away immediately. Bellowing Roar deals about half of Brad's health, but Mogal will fall and trade it one for one. Solo Laners both down up into the skies. Looks for one. Yaku crashes down, heals up Brad's. Zerga's gonna get stunned away. He's forced to leap. The Strife is not gonna find Ryan. And everybody's so low on the side of Donkey Hoop. Both teams have their own form of sustain, but Silence has just a little bit more. Makes the shield that comes through. Blanket by Yakin. But he's only gonna find Ekrom. That's gonna get the beads out of him. The damage is oh. through the Golden Apple. Just barely off the mark. I'm not even sure how that didn't grab Yakin onto that one. And with that ultimate miss, that'll be the end of the fight for Smiley Face. Yeah, just a bit too much poke coming out there from Donkey Hoop. Great play. By Yokin and Gunter stops that bit. Stop that right type is falling down. I'm sorry. Raider gonna get crit to oblivion, forced to just leap away to safety. They had a Yemoja, and you know what they can do when they're low? Just go into the jungle, heal up from a camp, heal up from Yemoja healing, and go back over to the lane and try once more. Phoenix is still at half health, and they're not gonna give it up just this easily. Well, Sarah goes back in full health himself. Silence very low on Omi, as well as Brot's low on Mana, so they're not gonna be able to stick around for too much longer. Mogal has teleported in to make his rotation. So we're back to the 5v5 under this Phoenix. It's at half, waiting for the minion wave this time around. It's getting pushed up very slowly back behind them. Finally, we'll make its wrap around the corner with the bird at half. The bevy and the rest of the team at full health, besides from Yakin, a little over half. Ultimate's online for everybody but Yakin. The river's rebuke will drop down immediately onto Bevy. That force the lurking in the waters, as well as the golden apple into the world. Serpent goes Mogal, looking for Bevy. We'll get the knock up onto him. But he's going to go back to the safety of his team with that third swing of it. Bring himself back up to full. The Riptide from Silence is there. The Phoenix still stands, but not for much longer as it will finally fall. The smiley face after what felt like two minutes of constant aggression. Bevy gets caught out by Syriga. And with Bevy down, that might be the call for smiley face to go through as Ekrom finds a massive crit. And Raiden gets taken down by the damage of the airstrike. Ekrom with the double. And Gunner stuck through. The Preds gets one, but it's not enough as the Titan falls to Syriga and Mogal. They just decided, okay, we can get the first two Phoenixes. We want this third one. We really want this third one. We're going to let the other two respawn to take the third one and then take your Titan. It, that, that fight lasted so long just because mm -hmm. the sustain from Yemoja happens to be something that wins in the game once more. The, it, the innate sustain happens once again to win the game for Smiley Face over Don Cube. Don't, don't you need to go back to the drawing board and think, can we actually play against Sustain? Can we figure out ways to deal with it? Once again, we talked about anti-heal. We didn't talk about it nearly as much in this game as the last two with how much extra Sustain there was, but th there's got to be some kind of answer to these drafts that Donku are going up against and they are just constantly falling apart on. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the set looked okay for them. I mean, they had a decent performance in game one. They had less so in game two. That's because they got adjusted on quite well. And this was a chance for them to show that they had that capability as well. They thought they would have... In my, in my opinion, they should have sort of expected Smiley Face to go into something similar to what they did in game number two, and they kind of did. Just a few different picks up here and there. And then Donkey Hoof needed to make those adjustments as well. They did make some adjustments. They had an actual proper mage in the mid lane rather than the Ola run. They had a different jungler coming out uh, in the jungle for Preds. Bevy Monster on the Sobek looked a lot more comfortable than it did in some previous games. 
but uh, again it just it just didn't mesh well together and it's not because the gods don't mesh well together it's just the communication just seems to be a bit off for them i think for me the biggest takeaway onto this set is, is personally for me yakin really needs to work on the farm because for how much he put himself behind in the early stages when it came to late game there's no farm for you late game once you get past 20 25 minutes of the stage are in you're not going to be getting levels because he was so far behind from basically minute one of the game. There was nothing he could really offer besides, here's my two relics for you guys. That, that That's all I got. Here's a couple of relics and, and a little bit of a heal. Have fun. He, he really couldn't frontline for this team. Yeah, and if he had a look on that previous screen, you would have noticed that he had about 20 wards. And the rest of the team was still stuck down near single digits. I mean, the only other person that goes over with double digits is Gunter. And then the E-Chrome... Blows him out of the water with 22 compared to Raiden's 5. Hey, Dog Dog Cube just didn't have the vision to make the place that they wanted to in the early game. And then you even compare the damage and healing of the two supports onto a 2800 to uh, 5700 at Violet Silence, so half, and then barely even a quarter of the healing that he was able to put out compared to Ice Silence as well. Now, a little unfair to compare Yemoji Heal to a Horus Heal because of how far I can bounce, but even still, you didn't get the damage that you needed with Horus and you didn't get the healing that you needed with him, so. What was the reason really for the Horus pick into this one? I, I think, again, Donkey Hoof, much better performance in this week than they had in week number one against the Poppies, but they still have a little bit of that drawing board execution to work out. You know, kind of work on the drafts, but I think most importantly this time, work on the game and the game play over, over anything else this time around. Their drafts were much stronger this week than last week. All three of these drafts look 100% uh, better than what they picked up last week. Now it's just that execution phase to work on for them. Absolutely, and that's all you can really you know, hope for as a semi-new team coming together and just finding your way up into the challenger circuit this quickly. It, there are going to be teething problems. There are going to be you know issues going into the challenger circuit. Some that wouldn't have been highlighted until you get here. And it's mm. how quickly you can react, how quickly you can adapt to those different challenges and that you come across. And they've they've proven that they can. You know, adapt quite quickly. Just they need to adapt quicker in the middle of the set rather than taking a whole right. week for them to change. Right. And with that, we are going to take it to a quick break when we come back. Our second set of the day. Yeah, we still have another one to go after three games in set one. You thought that was it. No, no, no. We got one more coming at you here for the European Smite Challenger circuit. We'll be back in just a few minutes with the start of set two.